made and I bow into the created. Now I can stand bold in my heart and mind is sober. Looking to see a sign, my staff turned to a cobra. With magic, they did the same. Refused to fear his name. Hearts remain hard to their firstborns were slain. The knowledge you have is vain. Chakras and Kundalini's, Kabbalah, Tree of Life, Witchcraft and Genies, Mystery School teaching. Of course, it gotta be right. You know it all. Somehow to gain eternal life. Were you there when he made the earth? When he formed man's bones, only used the dirt. Were you there when he made the planets? Please tell me how he did it if you understand it. Were you there when he made the heavens? And all their array rested on the seventh. All you have is speculation and theories. Gave us basic commands, we comprehend them clearly. What's the purpose of living? What's the purpose of dying? Who do you believe when everybody is lying? How do you wait fire? Count the sands of the seas. Tell me how many stars throughout the galaxy. Some things only I know. If questions linger in your mind till your eyes close. But here's something you can understand. Fear your his commands to do it your man. Check. Can I get a seven in check if we can be heard? Smile on my face. Everything look good so far. And then can I get a seven in the chat if Rib can be heard? Rib, can I get a mic check? Mic check, mic check. One, two, three, mic check, mic check. Uh, yeah, got you. Shabbat Shalom, everybody that's still coming in and welcome. Hallelujah. Um, so part two of the season of the fall harvest, right? So last week, um, as we kind of introduced this study, we we laid the overview out in which we're talking about the fall feast of Yah, um, because that's the season that we're getting ready to get into. And we talked about um, how they spoke to things that were not just literal, but were also prophetic. Uh, for example, if we think about the wise men that visited Messiah at his birth, it says those wise men were wise, but if we think about how they were wise, they, they were men that studied the scrolls, right? They understood how prophetically it was already foretold that Messiah was going to come into the earth. And so what I'm submitting to you in this study is that um, the first three feasts that we celebrate, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, were fulfilled when he came in the flesh and he walked those things out. And I'm also submitting to you that the fall feasts, synonymous with the fall harvest, will be fulfilled when he returns. So that's where we're at. And a couple of examples of that I have here. Um, so let's read these really briefly as we open this up. Let's go to uh, Hebrews 10 and 7. Just to open this up and get us back in the mindset of where we left off. 
I'll, I'll read these two real because they weren't even in my notes. I just added them just now. Um, Hebrews 10 and 7 says, Then I said, See, I come in the scroll or in the roll of the book. It has been written concerning me to do your desire, O Elohim. Um, and so this is a quote actually from Psalms chapter 40, verses 6 through 8. Uh, and it's just being quoted. But let's look at another verse that goes into a little bit more detail of what Messiah was talking about. And that's John 5 and 39. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 39. Keep that with you. And he says, uh, you search the scriptures because you think you possess everlasting life in them, in the scriptures. And these are the ones that bear witness of me. He says, you search the scriptures because you want or you think you possess everlasting life, but these are those that bear witness of me. And so what I'm submitting to you once again is the idea that Yah gives us these things in Torah that are school teachers unto Messiah, right? Just like the book says, these are the law is a school teacher unto Messiah. Um, if we understand how we operate as parents, those of us that are here, that are as parents, we tell our children to do things that we say. And we know that when we tell them to do something, a lot of times they don't understand why. But we also understand that through repetition and, and, and as they grow and mature, they begin to understand why. And so what I'm saying is the law is very much like that. Yah gave us the law and as part of this covenant that he made with us, um, there are levels of understanding the law that also reveal to us the nature of Messiah, the nature of the kingdom, and also prophecy, right? And so that's, that's really what we're talking about here. So last week, we discussed um, as part of the season of the harvest, trumpets, and we began discussing atonement. Um, and we were talking about how atonement really corresponds with what scripture refers to, and it's synonymous with what scripture refers to as the day of Yah or the day of judgment uh, and things like that. And so uh, we left off with dealing with the judgment of Babylon. And it's, and it's good to understand, like as we, as we came into the truth, um, we were of the mindset originally that Babylon simply was talking about America, right? And there was some that felt like Babylon was talking about the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, but when you really look at what's being talked about, Babylon is really a system, right? So, so as part of a governmental system, if you will, you have a religious part of that system, right? Um, you have an economic part of that system. Uh, there are different parts that all work together to create this system. So what I read, let me just be honest, and what I read, I don't believe that when we talk about Babylon, especially in prophecy, it's talking about necessarily one specific place, unless we're talking about ancient Babylon, but it's talking about the system that we see being rolled over um, from ancient Babylon, but it's rolled into a new system and so you see traces of the same type of thing working that that were working in the ancient babylonian system working in today's babylonian system that's why you find uh similar worships um and and things of that nature right uh and so that's where we're at so we're going to pick up today in isaiah 47 um, and we're talking about the judgment of Babylon, the judgment of Babylon, and, and I'm corresponding that. Can I have something to erase this, please? I'm corresponding that with uh, atonement, right? So Isaiah 47, we're going to read one through five. Isaiah chapter 47, hold up. 
verses 1 through 5. And let me say in advance, thank you for the reading to my Isha. Uh, I know it's I know it's more than a notion, especially when you gotta read and allow me to jump in there and interject as I as I feel I need to interject something and you gotta find a second to pause and then pick back up where you left off. I really appreciate it. Couldn't do this without you. Mom. Oh, thank you, Adam. All right. So, uh, whenever you're ready, Isaiah 47, 1 through 5. Okay. Um, come down and sit in the dust, O maiden daughter of Babel. Sit on the ground without a throne, a daughter of Kasdim. Mm -hmm. For no more do they call you tender and delicate. Mm -hmm. Take the milestones and grind flour. Remove your veil. Lift up your skirts. Uncover the leg. Pass through the rivers. Let your nakedness be uncovered. Mm. Let your shame also be exposed. I take vengeance and I meet no man. Our Redeemer, Yahuwah of hosts, is his name. The set apart one of Israel. Sit silent and go into darkness, O daughter of Kasdim. For no more do they call you mistress of rain. So let's stop there for a second. Um, so this daughter of Babylon. I know this is phrasing this very delicately because of scriptures, but basically this is saying that this so-called maiden is being a little dirty. There's, there's some filth that need to be exposed when the skirt is going to get lifted up, right? Um, she's a little harsh from what we read, and, and we're going to read that as we go further. Um, it says, remove your veil, lift up the skirt, uncover the leg, pass through the rivers, let your nakedness be uncovered. Then he calls her daughter of the Cassidine. So let's look at that. Y'all remember us talking about the Cassidine when we were doing the priesthood study? In the Strong's Concordance, that's going to be H3778. For your notes, H3778, I'm going to read it for you. Occasionally sown as a second form with enclitic meaning toward the Cassidites, patronomic, from H3777, only in the plural, Cassidite, descendant of Cassad, by implication Chaldean. So it says, uh, daughter of the Chaldeans, right? Um, also, an astrologer, an astrologer. I ask y'all why that's important. As if proverbial of that people. So proverbial, the, the Chaldeans were known to be astrologers, is what they're saying. Uh, Petronymical from H3777, only in the plural, a Kassedai, or descendant of Kassed by invocation of Chaldean, as if, uh, as if so descendant, also an astrologer. Y'all get the picture. So that's what it's saying. Um, Then it also calls her a maiden, right? Mm -hmm. Or mistress. It says mistress of kingdoms. Mistress of kingdoms. And so that word is H1404. H1404 for your notes. Gibbereth. Gibbereth. From H1376, mistress or lady mistress. Why is that important? Well, let's look at what it says it comes from. It says it's the feminine of H1376. H1376 H is master, a master, or a lord. Lord. Master. So she's a master, master of kingdoms. Says that's from H1396, Gabar. H1396. I pray y'all take your notes. Gabar. Gabar is a primitive root, meaning to be strong, by implication to prevail, to act insolently, to be insolent, to exceed, confirm, be great, be mighty, prevail, to put 
to more strength, strengthen, be strong, or be valiant. So this word includes insolence, includes the understanding of this individual is calling themselves a master, but in some way is being insolent. They're strong, but they're being insolent, right? So he says, no more are you called mistress of kingdoms. Uh, Isaiah 46, we're going to go picking up in verse 6 through 6 through 15. Uh, we're still in 47. Isaiah chapter 47, picking up where we left off in verse 6. Six through fifteen, whatever you're ready. I was wroth with my people. I have profaned my inheritance, and I gave them into your hand. You showed them no compassion. You made your yoke very heavy on the elderly. And you said, I'm a mistress forever, so that you did not take these matters to heart and did not remember the latter end of them. And now hear this, you who are given to pleasures, who dwells complacently, who says in your heart, I am, and there is none but me. Pause right there. Does that sound familiar to y'all? Mm -hmm. Like when you go to Genesis, and we remember <clears throat> Moses going to um, the master and saying, when I go to the children of Israel, and I tell them these things you're telling me to tell them, who should I say sent me? And he says, what? He says, I am. I am that which I am. I, I will be whatever I will myself to be. Now, this is not the same word, but this is saying in, uplift, in, up, in uplifting of themselves. It is me. There is none but me. Right? But this ain't talking about God. This is talking about who we refer to as the queen of the heavens, right? Somebody taking a seat of authority and putting themselves in a position that Yahuwah did not give them, right? Go ahead. I do not sit as a widow, nor do I know the loss of children. Mm -hmm. Both of these come to you suddenly in one day, the loss of children, and widowhood they shall come upon you in completeness because of your many witchcrafts for your numbers for your numerous great potent spells mm -hmm. and you have trusted in your evil you have said no one sees me your wisdom and your knowledge have led you astray mm -hmm. and you have said in your heart i am and there is none but me but the evil shall come upon you you not knowing from where it rises and trouble fall upon you, you being unable to put it off mm -hmm. and ruin come upon you suddenly, which you know not. So pause right there for a second. So this is interesting. Um, somebody, somebody made reference to this when we first started studying the truth. And they were talking about, if you think about this nation that we live in and all of the wars that we have been engaged in, all of those wars have always been fought on someone else's soil. There has never been an instance in our lifetime or in the, in the history of this nation where, where anyone from foil, foreign soil has come since, since it was established as an actual nation. I'm not talking about the colonies. I'm talking about since it was established as an actual nation um and wage war on this soil right so when you read where it says i have i haven't seen loss of children right on this soil this nation ain't seen that right um but this is saying it's all gonna come suddenly on you in one at one time this is the only place that we know in our understanding where we sit in history, that that hasn't happened. It says it's gonna all happen in one time and in one day. Um, and it's going to happen because of what? Your many witchcrafts, your numerous and potent spells. 
And it says, that's what you trusted in. So he going to say, he going to tell him now, since that's what you trust in, continue to trust in that and see if it's going to deliver you in the day of Yah, in the, in the prophetic atonement that is to come. Uh, picking up a verse 12. So stand now with your potent spells and your many witchcrafts in which you have labored from your youth. If so be you are able to profit, if so be you find strength. Mm -hmm. You are exhausted by your many counsels. Mm -hmm. Let the astrologers and the stargazers and those who pro prognosticate mm -hmm. by the new moons mm -hmm. stand up and save you from what is coming upon you. Mm -hmm. See, they shall she they shall be as stubble. Fire shall burn them. They do not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. Mm -hmm. There is not a coal to be warmed by, nor a fire to sit before you. So they shall be to you with whom you have labored, your merchants from your youth. Mm -hmm. They shall wonder, each one his own way. There is none to save you. There is none to save you in that day. And that's a future time that we're referencing here, or that's being referenced by Isaiah here. But again, we back to them, star, them, them stargazers and astrologers, right? It says, uh, you you are exhausted by your many counsels. Let your let your astrologers and your stargazers and those who prognosticate by the new moons. Don't that put y'all in the mind of uh, of uh, Jeremiah ten? Don't be dismayed by the signs of the heavens because the Gentiles are dismayed by them. Uh, again, if we go back to um, Jubilees, and it talks about how there will be those who make observances of the moon, how it comes in yearly 10 days too soon right so so and i don't i don't mean to directly tie this to that study but the the whole book is saying the same thing so it's kind of impossible to detach one thing from the other it's all related right um those other priesthoods is what is being referenced here so he's saying of those who found the writings that were pre-flood and you took that in secret and now you have made that the thing that you trust in and the priests that are priests of that are who you trust in as your counselors he said now trust in them keep trusting in them since you didn't trust in me i want you to keep trusting in them let them look at the stars let them look for the new moons literal new moons and 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 think that they own some calendar they shouldn't be on and see if that justifies what i'm finna do when i when i've been giving you the truth and i've been giving you the way back and you said he's saying i don't want that i prefer this right so moving on um Still dealing with the judgment. He says, declare among the nations, Babylon is taken. Baal, as in Baal, is confounded. Israel and Judah together are wandering sheep, asking the way to Zion, and have forgotten their resting place. All who devoured them said, we are not guilty. Let's read about that. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 50, we're going to read 1 through 6. Jeremiah or Jeremiahu. Chapter 50, verses 1 through 6. Whenever you're ready. The word that Yahuwah spoke concerning Babel, concerning the land of the Chaldeans by Yermiah the prophet, mm -hmm. declare, among, declare amongst the nations, and let it be heard, and lift up a banner, and let it be heard, and do not conceal it. Say, Babel shall be taken, Baal shall be put to shame, Murdoch shall be broken. Her images shall be put to shame. Her idols shall be broken. Pause just for a second. Ooh. Let it be heard. Lift up a banner. Okay. Um, do not conceal it. Don't hide your life. Cry aloud. Saying, Babel shall be taken. The specific place, the whole system, all the like, shall be taken. Baal which is synonymous with Baal, which is synonymous with the Canaanite Phoenician deity that Israel consistently got in trouble for worshiping. 
trying to be like the nations and the heathens, who is also known as L-O-R-D, right? L-O-R-D and Baal, that's, that's that name, right? Um, says, shall be put to shame. Mordach, another one of those deities, shall be broken and her images shall be put to shame. Her idols shall be broken. Look, we got so removed from our heritage and our inheritance that we were worshiping all of it, right? Baal Gad, Baal Gad in English translates to the Lord God, right? Um, that's why we read uh, in, in other scriptures where it says, no longer will you call me Baal, but you, you, will, call, you will know me by my name, right? Um, the images that we used to worship. God willing, all of us tuning in have repented of that. But the images, the carved images, the molded images that we all used to have in our houses or in the churches that we attended, all that y'all said, that was a problem. And this is where it started. Like Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, they were saying even back then, and we're talking about a time when Israel knew they was Israel, right? They did not know who they were, but they were still doing these things that the prophets was coming to them and bringing the word of Yah saying, Yah said, stop this wickedness. I'm about to bring down the fire, right? And so that's what's going on. He's saying now, um, you who caused them, talking about Babylon now, you who caused them to do this, I'm coming after you, right? Picking up at verse three. For a nation shall come up against her from the north, mm -hmm. which shall make her land waste, mm -hmm. and none shall dwell in it. They shall flee. They shall go, both men and beasts, mm -hmm. in those days. And at that time, declares Yahuwah. Pause. I want y'all to listen to every time she read, in those days or at that time, or in those days and at that time. That should, that should automatically let us know we're talking about a future event. This is prophecy, right? And then the question is going to be, as we read through this, did this happen already or are we still waiting for this to happen? And, I, and I, as we read certain things, I'm going to ask you, did that happen? Has that happened yet? Because if it happened, for example, when Nehemiah and Ezra went back to Israel and rebuilt the kingdom, then we can say, no, that was talking about that. That happened already. But if we say that hasn't happened, then we're still talking about a future event. Y'all with me? Okay, go ahead. The children of Israel shall come. They and their children of Yehuda together, mm -hmm. weeping as they come and seek Yahuwah, their Elohim. They shall ask the way to Zion, mm -hmm. their faces toward it. Come and let us join ourselves to Yahuwah in the everlasting covenant never to be forgotten. Okay. My people, you say, what? I said, okay. oh, through six. Okay. My, uh, my people have been wandering sheep. Mm -hmm. Their shepherds have led them astray. Mm -hmm turning them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have gotten their resting place. Mm. Can we deny that that's what's happening? So again, my question to y'all is like, did Nehemiah and Ezra forget their resting place? When we think about, when we think about um, the two kings of Persia, that helped Israel get back home because y'all allowed it at that time. Darius and uh, Cyrus. Cyrus, total, thank you. Um, when Darius and Cyrus decreed that Israel could go back home and Ezra and Nehemiah led that charge, did they not know how to get back to Israel? They did, they knew, right? They had not forgotten their resting place. So this scripture is not talking about that time. It's talking about a different time when when us as we see have forgotten our resting place we're just now coming back to waking up and understanding that that's our home and now we need to know okay if i was trying to get there how do i get there, how do I get there? right and then where exactly was he saying was our borders and where exactly exactly was he saying was jerusalem where exactly was he saying was the city of david and where exactly should i go if I'm presenting myself three times a year for these set apart times, more than these days, however you want to phrase that, where exactly do I go, 
right? Ezra and Nehemiah didn't have that problem. They knew exactly what it, they had not been removed long enough from their culture and from their land not to know how to get back there. Matter of fact, no one all the way up into this particular captivity that we're in now had ever tried to remove us from our heritage, right? I mean, they removed us from our land, but they hadn't tried to separate us from our heritage yet. This was the one time when we were removed from our inheritance. This was the one time that they beat it out of us, renamed us, and then had other people step in and pretend like they were us and started actually changing history. Y'all with me? All right, picking up in verse seven. Gonna go uh, just seven and eight at first. Jeremiah 50, seven and eight. Uh, I'll put it here. Okay, whenever you're ready. All who found them have devoured them, and their, and their adversaries have said, We are not guilty, because they have sinned against your whole. Mm -hmm. The home of righteousness and the expectations of their fathers. Mm -hmm. Flee from the midst of Babel. Come out of the land of the Chaldeans mm -hmm. and be as rams before a flock. Okay, pause there. Two things I want to mention. So, number one, the fact that this said that that those who devoured us said that we are not guilty because what? Because they said against you. They said against you, right? So that lets you know that not only did they know who we were, they knew who our power was, and they knew how to separate us from our power, right? And so they knew to some degree that they were being weaponized against us to be used as a as a belt as punishment because we sinned right second thing is i am aware as you are too i believe that there are other portions of scriptures that say that um at a certain point the ram are going to be separated from the sheep right and here we read this says for us to come out of the midst of Babylon or the Babylonian system, whether it's literally or figuratively, I believe there's a place for both. There's a figure, there's a literal coming out, but there's also a figurative coming out, meaning mentally you have to let go of the things that are of Babylon first, before you ever come out physically, right? But this says, for those that are coming out to be as rams before a flock, why would it say that? Let's look, look at what it means to be a ram. Because we, when we read that Messiah is going to separate the rams from the sheep, that's like it's a, the, the rams are a bad thing and the sheep are a good thing, right? But in this reference, it's not saying that. 62 and 60. H, 62, 60. What does it mean to be a ram in this context? In this context. Do I need to say that again? In this context, what does it mean to be a ram? So, H6260. From H6257 means to be prepared. Wow. That is full grown. Or I'm gonna put mature, uh, spoken only in plural of he goats, or figuratively of leaders of people. Wow. Leaders of people can also mean chief one, or a he goat, or a ram. Okay, so the word is attuned. That's the Hebrew word, attuned. And it means to be full grown. It also means to be prepared. Think about the parable of what, Maria? What jumps in your head? Uh, the ten maidens, perhaps? Yeah. Okay. The parable of the ten maidens. Having your lamp trimmed with oil. Israel, can you give me one of those that's a little bit more moist, please? Or the actual erase things, right? Um, and so this says, come out. Now think about what we just read. It said, come out of Babylon and be as rams before a flock. Now, I realize that 
they don't understand what's going on. Sheep. Right? The sheeple. I understand they don't realize what's going on. They haven't been studying to show themselves approved. They haven't been uh, nurturing Duroc within them and, and nurturing their love of the truth. But you know better. So it says you come out and be like leaders mature in your walk among the people. Does that make sense? Okay, hallelujah. Uh, verse 9. Just not. But look, I am stirring up and bringing up against Babel an assembly of great nations mm. from a land of the north, and they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be captured. Their arrows are like those of a mighty skilled man, not returning empty handed. Hallelujah. So y'all remember last week when I made reference to the sacrifices of boots equaling 70 sacrifices, 70 animals being sacrificed throughout the course of that seven days. And the table of nations, Genesis 10, showing 70 nations making up the nations of the world, especially at that time. Um, and so this is gonna be a reoccurring thing, right? My submission to you at that point was that during this time period that we're talking about, the prophetic atonement, uh, the prophetic trumpets, first of all, the prophetic atonement, that all of these nations are going to be gathered up to one place because judgment has to happen for everybody. That includes Israel, right? Because scriptures say, I start at my house and I judge first and then I judge all the nations. So this clearly says an assembly of great nations from the land of the north and they shall array themselves against her. We're going to keep reading because I know that said the land of the north so you know you might be able to say well that just said the land of the north. We'll see. We'll keep going. Okay. Let's go on to Psalms 137. Psalms 137 we're going to read 1 through 9. This is one of my favorite passages because even before I came to the truth I was into uh reggae music i'm sure some of y'all were too and there was a song i used to love by the rivers of Babylon, where we sit down don't say that no okay <laughs> all right so that's that's where they got the lyrics for this song from so let's read what was being said uh remember dawi and asa were both poets and songwriters. So the book of Psalms is full of poems and songs, um, as well as prayers. And so this is one of them. Go ahead. By the rivers of Babel, there where we sat down and we wept as we remember Mount Zion. Uh, we hung our leaders upon the willows in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. For there our captures ask for us for the words of a song. Mm -hmm. And our plunders for rejoicing, saying, Sing to us a song of Zion. Pause oh, for a second. Go ahead and read the next verse. I apologize. How could we sing the song of Yahuwah on foreign soil? So, as I read this, there's a couple of things come to mind. First of all, let us not forget Dawid was a prophet, right? Dang. At this point in the history of the nation of Israel, we have not gone into captivity in Babylon. Right? That had not happened yet. Um, so he's talking about a future event and he's relaying the sentiments of, of the nation being removed from their land, being captive of Babylonians and being mocked by saying, sing us one of those Negro spirituals. Sing us one of them, you know, slave songs that you like, go down most all that. Sing. And, and the response is, how can I sing? How can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? That's what's being said here. Go ahead. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget. Mm -hmm. Let my tongue cling to my palate. If I do not remember you, if I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy, mm -hmm. 
Remember, O Yahuwah, against the sons of Edom. What? Remember, O Yahuwah, against the sons of Edom. Okay. The day of Jerusalem. Who said, lay it bare. Lay it bare hmm. to its foundation. Now that happened. That, that historically happened when Israel was getting removed from the land. Edomites was looking on from afar and instead of coming to help said, take it, ruin it, burn it down so we can go in and take over it because Esau, Edom felt like they should have it in the first place, yep. felt like it should have been theirs all along, right? Yep. So he said, no, nah, don't forget Edom. And that's the thing about David, David didn't forget his enemies. No. He, he may have let his enemies live through certain uh uh instances for a later date but he never forgot as a matter of fact uh funny um i'm a, i'm a i'm a fan of the movie the godfather um and i as i read about dawid and his son especially shlomo um i think about how the makers of the movie say it's really not a mafia movie the way they put it together they didn't they didn't put it together as a mafia movie even though that was even though that was what was going on, um, the subtext was it was supposed to feel like a story of a king and his sons, right? Um, and when I read about how Dawi was on his deathbed, passing on to his son the kingdom and telling his son, look, I let this person live because I made a promise to them. And I said, as long as I was alive, they wouldn't die. But this is what they did right and they gotta die so as soon as i'm gone i need you to make sure you close out that account <laughs> that account and i know people think slow-mo wasn't like that yeah. but but that we told so it's like look this one that one and that one they gotta go son as soon as i'm gone the, the the contractual agreement that we had is done get them out the way before you even begin your kingdom and that's exactly what slow-mo did slow-mo came through and rat -ta 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 Close several accounts <laughs> so that he could start his kingdom all right. But anyway, so that's what Dawi said here. He said, look, I ain't forgot what Esau did. And I know you didn't forget what Esau did. Uh, remember Edom, the day of Jerusalem, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, lay it bare, lay it bare to his foundation. Go ahead, verse 8 and 9. O daughter of Babel, who are to be destroyed, blessed is he who hmm. repays you okay. your deed. What you did to us. Bless is he who shall take and dash your little ones against the rock. Dang. Bless is he who shall take your little ones and dash them against the rock. Because you showed it to us. They did that in Egypt. They did that in America. Right? So so that's how you know it's a spirit. Right? Like how they all operating from the same playbook. It's a spirit. All right. So if we're going to relate these things in 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 prophecy that the that the prophets are talking about to an end time event, then we got to go and see how it corresponds with uh, end time prophecy in say Revelations, right? So we read about the dragon being cast down. We read about the dragon making war with the woman and her and her seed. We read about the woman fleeing into the wilderness and the earth helping the woman and the dragon being enraged. With the remnant of her seed funny we were just talking about this last night right the dragon and the woman and we we keep emphasizing that in a lot of these prophetic conversations a woman is synonymous with a nation in this case the nation being the nation of israel so let's read about that let's go to revelation 12. and read about this future event corresponding with Revelations. Let's go to Revelations 12. We're going to read 13 through 17. Revelations 12, 13 through 17. And um, side note, if, if you haven't already, check it out. Um, we did a study called The Prodigal Son. It's on, it's on the Project Wake Up Jacob website. I think we also did a video. So it'll be on the YouTube uh, 
channel as well. And it was, let me double check real quick. The prodigal son, Joseph, Israel, and Yahushua. And the reason I'm bringing that up now is because there are, there are some who sit on opposite ends of the spectrum as it relates to um, certain events that took place that line up with Israel. And some say those same events line up with Messiah. And, and among the nation, there's a debate sometimes about, uh, let's say, Isaiah 42, for example. Um, uh, to whom shall the arm of Yahuwah be revealed. When you read about that, there are, there are people who don't believe in the New Testament and say, let's talk about Israel, right? And then there's uh, the Christian church, for example, to say, let's talk about Jesus. And one of the things that we get to in that study, the prodigal son, is the parallels between the nation of Israel and Messiah. And that's not coincidence, right? There are certain things in Isaiah 42 that can't just be talking about Israel. And there are certain things in Isaiah 42 uh, that correspond with what happened with Israel as there are in Revelations that happen with not just Messiah, but also with Israel. And so um, we dig into that a little bit in that, in that study. So if you haven't checked that out, I would, I would uh, encourage you to, to get a little bit more understanding. Okay. Um, this is one of those instances, right? And I'll, I'll explain after she reads it. Revelations 12, 13 through 17, whenever you're ready. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Beautiful. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle to fly into the wilderness to her place, uh -huh. where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time. Pause for just a second. So we, we have a actual account of Herod, the Edomite king, persecuting the literal woman who gave birth to the male child. And the literal woman, Miriam or Mary, fled into where? Egypt. Egypt. And she was she was uh, nurtured, her and Joseph and, and, and Messiah, and they were secure in that place and he was allowed to grow and to flourish, even though Herod, just like Pharaoh, was seeking to kill all male children born at that time because he Nimrod. understood prophetically from his counselors, Nimrod too. Yeah, Nimrod and, and Abraham came. Um, that the child being born was a threat to his kingdom. So that's the literal. Right? Spiritually and prophetically, now we're dealing with the woman represented as the nation of Israel birthing the child uh, who is Messiah as well. And saying that the woman, the nation, will be fleeing into a place of safety known as the wilderness. How do we know that's talking about the nation and not just the literal event? Well, let's keep reading and see. From the presence of the serpent. Mm -hmm. And out of his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river after the woman mm -hmm. to cause her to be swept away by the river. Mm -hmm. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the river which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed. With the what? The remnant. Of her seed. With the rem remnant of her seed. Beautiful. Saying what? Those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and mm -hmm. possessing the witness of Yahushua Messiah. Okay, beautiful. So now we know this is not talking about the literal woman and her seed because the literal woman's seed is Messiah. But it's talking about the nation of which Messiah came out of and the remnant of her seed. And remember we talked about this last night. The dragon ain't worried about the nation that ain't keeping the commandments. And a dragon ain't worried about the nation that don't believe in Messiah. So even if you are bloodline Israel and you are not keeping Torah and you are not uh, um, uplifting the testimony of Messiah and everything that that includes, who he is, what his duty was when he came to earth, what his duty is when he comes back, who he is to us, 
that he uh, died for our sins and was resurrected and now sits at the right hand of the Heavenly Father with all power in his name. Like if you don't have the testimony and are keeping the commandments, the adversary is like, nah, they're good. They're not a threat. I'm only enraged with and have a problem with and I'm spewing this venom with those who are a threat because them doing that is a threat to me and my personal well-being. Does that make sense? They're not a threat, right? It's like the matrix. If they're not unplugged, they can still be used, right? So he only has an issue with those who are unplugged from the matrix. Okay. So um, still dealing with this idea of um, this, this period of atonement because it looks, again, like I said to y'all in, in the first study, atonement can look like one thing, one thing for some people and atonement can look like something else for other people. For those who are enemies of Yahuwah, atonement look like something. And for those who are in obedience and submission to Yahuwah's will, atonement looks a little bit different, right? So um, let's read about this. It says, I will bring you out with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with fury poured out. Uh, pass under the rod into the bond of the covenant and I will purge out the rebels. Let's read about that. So let's go to Ezekiel 20. And we're going to read 35, no, 33 through 36. Ezekiel 20, 33 through 36. There we go. Ezekiel 20, 33, whenever you're ready. Told out for posting those scriptures, sis. I appreciate it. As I live, declares the Master Yahuwah, do not I, with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with wrath poured out, reign over you. And I shall bring you out from the... peoples, and gather you out of the lands where you are scattered with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. Mm -hmm. And with wrath poured out. While you pause, since you pause anyway. Okay. So it says, I will bring you out from the peoples. That word peoples there is synonymous with the word nations. So it's saying, I will bring you out from the nations and gather you from the lands. Um, and that word lands is synonymous with the word earth. Everywhere that I scattered you in the earth, uh, where you are scattered with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with wrath poured out. Now we read about who we believe the arm in the hand to be, we read last week about uh, Isaiah 42, right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, go ahead. Read through 36. And I shall bring you into the wilderness of the peoples, uh -huh. and shall enter into judgment with you face to face there, mm -hmm. as I enter into judgment with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. So I shall enter into judgment with you, declares the Master Yahuwah. Now, here's my question. I told you, I'm going to ask y'all this periodically based on what we read. This says, when this event happens, I will bring you out from the lands, countries where I scattered you and enter into judgment with you face to face, the same way I entered into judgment with your forefathers. Has that happened yet? No. Okay. Hallelujah. If that hasn't happened yet, then this event that we're talking about is yet to come. So we need to be prepared for it. Let's go on uh, 37 and 38. And I shall make you pass under the rod, and shall bring you into the bound bond of the covenant, mm -hmm. and purge the rebels from among you, mm -hmm. and those who transgress against me. From the land where they sojourn, I bring them out, but they shall not come into the land mm -hmm. of Israel. Mm -hmm. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah. Beautiful. So at this point, when he says, I shall make you pass into the bond of the covenant, well, we, we already underwent a covenant once. So is this a new covenant, right? Is this, a, is this something new and different is what I'm asking? It's not. This is, this is talking about a renewing of that same covenant. So the one that we broke, the one that uh, we committed infidelity toward, he's now saying, if you, if, if, when you come out at this point, 
you're going to have the opportunity to renew your vows and keep them this time. That's what he's saying, right? Um, then it says, at that point, I'm going to purge the rebels out from you. And those who transgress me, what does it mean to transgress? Sin. Put that in your notes. First John 3 and 4 is the scriptural definition of sin. To sin is to transgress the law, right? So now we're talking about a future event and sinning is still a problem, mm -hmm. right? Okay. <laughs> So he says, and I'm going to purge those out who are rebels or rebellious and those who are still sinning, meaning they're not following the law, from the land where they sojourn. I bring them out. So the rebels and the transgressors may have an opportunity to come out, right? Like we talk about uh, that book that we referenced called The Shepherd of Hermas, uh, where the, the kingdom is being built, the, the, the castle, the tower is being built. And the workers are putting these bricks in the tower, like, you know, bricks in the tower, and they're separating the ones they think don't belong and the ones that pass their inspection go into the tower. And this individual who is representative of Messiah comes behind him and touches certain bricks. And they have to go and take them bricks and either throw them way off because they, they're not going to make it, or they throw them a little ways off because they still may have time to get it right, right? So, that's what this is talking about. That's that's why I like Shepherd of Hermas. It doesn't deviate from what Scripture says. I find I find corresponding um, evidence of what the Shepherd of Hermas says in what Scripture say. Right. So it says um, they may come out, but they shall not come into the land of Israel, and then you shall know that I am Yahuwah. Well. We got some people that came from somewhere and they in the land of Israel right now and they still being rebellious and they still right. transgressing. Yeah, gay pride parades, all that. So I don't think we're there yet. Okay, moving on. So then he tells somebody, said, go serve your idols if you are listening to me. Like if that's what you went to, keep doing what you're doing. Don't change now what the young folks say, Tama. Keep that same energy. <laughs> Go on to verse 39. Okay. As for you, O house of Israel, mm -hmm. thus says the master Yahuwah, Go, serve each of you his idols. And afterwards, if you are not listening to me, mm -hmm. but do not profane my set apart name anymore with your gifts and your idols. Hallelujah. What does that mean to profane his set apart name? How, how can you profane his name? What you think, Rick? Bring it to mind or what is saying from them? Okay, bring his name to nothingness. Use other names that are not his. There's another way to profane his name. Um, if if we run around talking about we Israel or Yashara, oh, yeah. but you are not operating in his likeness. So you're not taking his name, putting it on you, but doing something that's wicked. Yeah. That's profaning his name. Yeah, right? So he say. If, if what you in it, if what you into is idolatry, go do that. But don't profane my name. Don't keep calling yourself Israel, but still practicing it in this idolatry. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's go to Isaiah one. Isaiah chapter one, starting at verse two. What do we read to in Ezekiel? I apologize. I'm going to write it in. Uh, Ezekiel 33 to 36. I think we read 37 and 38 too. 39. So we went through 39. Okay, now we're going to Isaiah 1, uh, 2. Let me fix this one. Give me a second. Hope y'all got that one. First John 3 and 4, the scriptural definition of sin. Yep, she wrote that one down too. Okay, good deal. Uh, Isaiah 1, 2 through, we're going to go, um, 
hanging there, y'all. 31. I think. Let me check. Yeah. 2 through 31. Whatever you're at. Hear, hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for Yahuwah has spoken. I have reared and brought up children, but they have transgressed against me. An ox knows its owner, and a donkey is master's crib. Israel does not know. My people have not understood. Does, it, does that put you in the same mind of uh, the scripture that says, my people perish for lack of knowledge? Okay. Oh, yeah. Alas, sinning nation, mm -hmm. a people loaded with crookedness, a seed of evil doors, mm. sons of acting corruptly. Mm. They have forsaken Yahuwah. They have provoked the set apart one of Israel. They went backward. Okay. Why should you be stricken anymore? You continue in apostasy. Mm -hmm. All the head is sick. And all the heart faints. From the sole of the foot to the head, there is no soundness in it. Wounds and bruises and open sores. They have not been closed up or bound up or soothed with ointment. Mm -hmm. Your land is laid waste. Mm -hmm. Is that what's going on right now? Yes. Okay. Your cities are burned with fire. Mm -hmm. Strangers devour your land in your presence. Is that what's going on now? Yes, sir. Yeah, it happened in our presence and it's happening right now. And it is laid waste as overthrown by strangers. Mm -hmm. And the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in the vineyard, as a hunt in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. So your, your whole land that I gave you as an inheritance is overtaken and overrun by strangers who are abusing it, laying it waste, and you out in a tent looking from a distance. And what's been a, done? Is that a gay crime right here? Is that a gay? That's on the news, literally, fam. Like, oh my goodness, statistically, you telling me there's more homosexuality and and, and monkeypox and what what's not going on over there than even over here? Oh my goodness, how could this be? And because of what? What did it start off with saying? Sin. Sinning nation. Alas, sinning nation. Come on, verse 9. Unless Yahuwah of hosts had left to us a small remnant, mm -hmm. we would have become like Saddam. Mm -hmm. We would have been made like Amora. Give, give, give us uh, your breakdown on what a, a remnant is like, your analogy of a remnant. Okay, so you got a you got a bag of chips. Uh -huh. Empty the bag of chips out, and you see the crumbs. Uh -huh. Empty them out too, and the remnant is what's left there, clinging to the side of the bag. Okay. And in the in the in the in the in the, in the, uh, in the soles of the bag of chips, that's the remnant. Okay, okay, the chip example. Look okay. really no. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the house know already when I say give me an example. I'll leave that. But yeah, that's that's what it's like. Like that's that's a remnant. Like a lot of people throw that away. A lot of people disregard not nah, I mean not most rules. You know, we gonna turn that bag of chips up. Uh when it, when we was children, we flipped that bag inside out. Yeah. And we don't get that remnant. But um uh, yeah, that's what y'all say. If if I had not left a remnant, it'd have been over. You'd have been like Saddam, you'd have been like Gomorrah. Two different cities, remember, Sodom and Gomorrah was two different cities. They were just uh, adjacent to one another. Um, <laughs> okay, sis says she just did that. Um, yeah, so, um, Toda Akoti uh, Latasha, she posted in the room. I want to mention it for those that's not in the room for the YouTube. Hosea 4 and 6, my people suffer for lack of knowledge. That was, that was a scripture I referenced earlier. Okay, go ahead. Hear the word of Yahuwah, you rulers of Saddam. Mm -hmm. Give ear to the Torah of our Elohim, mm -hmm. you people of Amor. Of what use to me are your many slaughterings, declares Yahuwah. I have had enough of your sending offerings of rams and fats of 
fed beasts. Mm. I do not delight in your the blood of bulls or mm. lambs or goats. Mm. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand mm. to trample my courtyards? Stop bringing futile offerings, incense. It's an abomination to me. Mm. New moon, Sabbaths, the callings of gatherings. I am unable to bear unrighteousness and assembly. Mm. Pause. Okay, fam. I hate to do this, but I got to. My people. I love my people. There are some who take this and say, see, he don't want bulls, lambs, goat. That proves we're not supposed to eat meat. And that it's a sin to eat meat. Family, we got to read this with understanding. We have to read this in context. I, I, it, it grieves me when I listen to people take stuff out of context. So I love the emphasis that Red put by simply reading the, 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 the punctuation when she read this. Because um, it said, I've had enough of your ascending offerings of rams, the fat of beasts. I do not deny in the delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. It said that. What did he mean? It says, when you come to appear before me, it don't say, who has acquired this from your hand? It don't say it. It says, when you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courtyards? Because it's Yahuwah that required this of our hands, right? That's the punctuation there. Then it says, stop being, bringing futile offerings of bulls, of, oh, it don't say that, does it? It says incense. It don't even say meat right there, right? So this is including incense in the futile offerings, right? It says that's an abomination. It says your new moons are an abomination to him. In the context that he's talking about right here, it says your Sabbaths, the calling of gatherings, are all abominable to him in this context. Why? If you weren't sure, you just read the next sentence. It says, I am unable to bear unrighteousness and assembly. What he's saying is you're coming to him with blood on your hands. You're wicked. But you sacrifice these offerings like it make you not wicked anymore. You're doing unrighteous, unrighteous things, but you're bringing these offerings like that's going to make it right. So when he says, I delight in obedience, not the blood of bulls and goats, he's saying the whole purpose in the sacrifice of, for the atonement was to get you to understand obedience, not for you to save up your sacrificial offerings and say, I'm good, I'm covered, I got... I got about a week's worth of sin offerings here. That means I got about a week's worth of sins I can go commit. It's not what he was saying, right? And he also wasn't saying that you couldn't eat meat. <laughs> That's just not what this is saying, right? He also says, my being hates your new moons, your appointed times. They are all trouble to me. I am weary of burying them. You didn't read that yet, did you? Uh, yes. I you did? Mm -hmm. What was the last verse here? Okay. Uh, yeah. So he's saying, I, I cannot continue. I can't with you, is what he's saying. I can't with you. You, you, you. you doing this, you know you're wrong, and you think that this physical bull that was originally only ever supposed to be a representation of Messiah, land, whatever, um, it's covering your sins. It was never covering your sins. It was always just a placeholder, a debt holder until Messiah came and took on that debt for us and, and cleared the debt for us, for us to then go forward and not sin anymore, right? That's all it was saying. Go ahead with 15. And when you spread out your hands, I hide my eyes from you. Uh -huh. Even though you make many prayers, mm -hmm. I do not hear. Your hands have become filled with blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Mm -hmm. Stop doing evil. Mm -hmm. Learn to do good. Mm -hmm. Seek right ruling. Reprove the oppressor. Pause real quick. No, go ahead. Finish that, that verse. 
Defend the fatherless and plead for the widow. Okay, good. So again, um, just to be clear, he says your hands are filled with blood. Why? Because they've been sacrificing animals? Because they've been eating meat? No, no that's not what he's saying. If we weren't sure, he said, uh, put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. So that's how he's saying your hands are filled with blood. Because you're committing wickedness, because you're sinning, he equates that with blood on your hands. Again, in 17, he says, learn to do good. What does that include? Reproving the oppressor, defending the fatherless, pleading for the widow. By not doing those things, he says your hands are full of blood. Not from the literal sacrifice of the animals, but because you are not doing righteousness. Not doing righteousness is equated with your hands being filled with blood in this context. Not sure? Keep reading. Let's see. 18. Come now and let us reason together, says you Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet. What is the color of scarlet? Blood. Blood, right? So your sins are like scarlet. Continue. They shall be as white as snow. Uh huh. Though they are red like crimson. What color is crimson? Blood. Like blood, right? Okay. Your sins are being equated to blood in this context, right? They shall be as wool. Mm -hmm. If you submit and obey, you shall eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. Mm -hmm. For the mouth of your whore has spoken. Hallelujah. How the steadfast city has become a whore. Mm. I have filled it with right ruling. Righteousness lies in it, but now murderers. Mm. Your silver has become dross. Your wine is mixed with water. Ooh, that don't sound you know, good. That's bad. You, you mix it and drink with water? That don't sound good at all. Go ahead. Your rulers are stubborn and compassion and, and, and companies of thieves. Everyone loves bribes. And runs after rewards. Your rulers are stubborn and companions of thieves. Your your leaders, they homeboys, is 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 known extortionists. <laughs> Everyone loves a 501c3. I mean, I apologize. Everyone loves bribes and runs after rewards. They do not defend the fatherless nor take up the cause of the widow to reach them. That's not the first thing on their heart. The first thing on their heart is, is this. Even though scriptures say, seek ye first the kingdom and everything else will be a step. Now I know we need, I know we need money to survive. But this is clearly telling us, look, make this the priority. All of that will happen. If it's righteous, if what you're doing is righteous, Yah will be with you in your endeavor as long as it's righteous. But let's not make that the first thing to seek out the cash. <laughs> cash rules everything around me. And I used to love that song, but I'm like, what are we saying? What are, what are we what are we doing here? Okay, go ahead. 24, I believe. Okay. Okay. Your rulers are stubborn and companies of these. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves to bribe and runs as a reward. They do not defend the fatherless, nor does the cause of the widow reach them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the master declares, Yahuwah of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, ah, I shall be eased of my adversaries, mm -hmm. and I shall be avenged against of my enemies, and I shall turn my hand against you, and I shall refine your dross as with lie, mm -hmm. and I shall remove all of your alloy mm -hmm. and i shall give back your judges as at the first mm -hmm. and your counselors as at the beginning mm -hmm. after this you shall be called the city of righteousness a steadfast city so we're talking about a future event it says at this at this time i shall turn my hand against you refine you i won't be with you i'm gonna i'm gonna be against you because of your wickedness but but me being against you is a refining process. Remember we talked about the refining process, uh, what gold looks like when it's pure? It's clear, you can see through. The, 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 the fire has been turned up to the point where 
The impurities are burned out. It's spot free, right? Then it says, um, and at that point, and at that point, after I have refined you, I will give back your judges as at the first. So when do we have judges? We had judges before we asked for a king like the nations that surround us. When we said we wanted a physical king, he said, I'm going to give you a physical king, but you ain't going to like it. It's, it's going to be problems. Before we had kings, we went through a period of judges where there were righteous judges among us and the, the governing of the tribes was divided between those who ruled or governed over 50s, 100s, thousands, tens of thousands, and so on and so forth. And the leaders of those of those companies or those tribes then also got together and reported to Moshe in it, right? And so that's what he said. I'm gonna give you back judges as at the first um, and counselors as at the beginning. And after that, you shall be called a city of righteousness in a state of city. 27. Zion shall be ransomed with right ruling mm -hmm. and her returning ones with righteousness. And the destruction of transgressors and of sinners is together. And those who forsake your whore shall be consumed. Beautiful. Again, has this happened yet? Has it happened yet, right? Okay, so that's still a, a time that we are looking forward to. And as it relates to this atoning uh, prophecy, again, God always said he's going to start at his house. Like, I'm going to deal with my people first because they're saying, which he has been dealing with us, who can deny it, right? Then when he pull us out, he's gonna deal with us in the wilderness, but he's also gonna deal with those nations that come up against us, okay? Uh, 29. But they shall be ashamed of the terror of Beth trees, which you have desired. And you shall be embarrassed because of the gardens which you have chosen. For you shall be as a terror of Beth tree whose leaf fades, and as a garden that has no water. Mm. The strong shall be for tow, and his work for a spark, and both shall burn together with no one to extinguish. Woo. Man, that's harsh. All right. So, gather the bride and the groom. Come out and spare your people. Why should the nation say, where is their power? No longer is a reproach among the Gentiles. And I will pour out my spirit above upon all flesh before that great and awesome day. Let's go to Joel 2. I'm going to start at 16. Joel chapter 2, verse 16. Joel, who's in the scriptures translation? Oh, yeah. What you say, you like? It's a team. We have a team. Oh. Tell us when y'all need to get on my level. Who's pressing my Joel chapter 2, beginning at verse 16. Uh, what you saying in here? Christians thinking as long as they say in the name of Jesus, they are good on sinning. Paul using Romans 61, asking, should we continue to sin? Absolutely you right. Yeah, you're right, 100%. Yep. Let it not be. Does, should we let grace abound and continue in sin? Let it not be. He was clear over and over. I mean, if you want to miss Construe Paul's words, you can, but if you read it, in, like I say, in context, that's always the key. He's very clear. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Gather the people. Oh. Set the assembly apart. Mm -hmm. Assemble the elders. Mm -hmm. Gather the children and the nursing babies. Mm -hmm. Let a bridegroom come out from his room and a bride from her dressing room. Mm -hmm. Let the priests, servants of Yahuwah, Weep between the porch and the slaughtering place, mm. and let them say, "Spare your people, O Yahuwah, mm. and do not give your inheritance to reproach for the nations to rule over them." Mm. Why should they say among the peoples, 
Where is their Elohim? Pause. Verse 17. Let the priests servants now after everybody is gathered. And then it says, Let the priests, servants of Yahuwah weep between the porch and the what? Slaughter face or the altar. Why are the priests weeping? What what do we do on atonement? When we when we gather for atonement, we are mourning. We are looking and self-reflecting on ourselves, trying to tighten up anything that y'all telling us we need to tighten up, asking for forgiveness, repenting, right? But this goes even deeper, right? We're dealing with an atoning feel to what's going on, but what does it say after that? It says, don't give your inheritance, your people, who's his people? Israel. Over for a reproach. Why should the nation say, where is their power? Let's continue reading that. This, is, this, this has an atonement feel, but what's going on around this atonement? Go ahead. And, oh wait, oh, and let Yahuwah be jealous for his land mm -hmm. and spare his people. Mm -hmm. And let Yahuwah answer and say to his people, see, I am sending you the grain and the new wine and the oil. And you shall be satisfied by them. Mm -hmm. And no longer do I make you a reproach amongst the nations. Oh, okay. And the northerner I shall remove far from you mm -hmm. and drive him away into a dry and deserted land mm -hmm. with his face toward the eastern sea and his rear towards the western sea. Mm -hmm. And his stench shall come up and his smell rise, for he has done greatly. Okay, beautiful. So now... In, in what we just read in Isaiah, we were dealing with y'all dealing with Israel. Saying, this is how I'm dealing with you because of what you did. And now here, we're dealing with the nation as a whole, the remnant at least, repenting and saying, don't let this happen to us. We are with you. We are repenting. We are of you. We are your inheritance. We want to be what you said we should be. Now, protect us from them. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Yes. So that's what's going on. So let's let's read more about this. This is prophetic right here. Uh, I think you left off at 21. Do not fear, O soil. Be, be glad and rejoice. For you who it has done greatly. Even the soil is rejoicing. Because even yeah. the soil is going to be spared from the ravenger, the people ravaging the land that he promised to us that was that was removed from our possession because of our obedience but even when you read in prophecy and i want to say revelation say even the land will rejoice once we return to our rightful place and enjoy its what sabbaths okay do not fear you beasts of the field for the pastures of the wilderness shall spring forth and the tree shall bear its fruit the fig tree and the vine shall yield their strength. And you children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in Yahuwah, your Elohim, for he shall give you the teacher of righteousness mm. and what? cause the rain to come down for you mm -hmm. and form a rain and the latter rain as before. Oh. So it says, so it says he will give you the teacher. Right? Can you say that? Please. And thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. it says he will give you the teacher of righteousness he didn't say teachers of righteousness let me just make a point here because I, this is good what we're doing I, I, I'm in agreement with sharing knowledge and sharing studies uh, but scripture is clear say studies to show yourself approved um and I don't have need of a following. This is for the building of the body, right? And so as we share these things, whether it's you checking this out on YouTube or you checking out any other YouTube channel uh, with brothers, brothers, sisters, sharing the portion that Yahuwah has given them, for the uplifting of the entire body, you have to keep in mind there's only one teacher that we ever read about, and that is Yahushua. That is the Ruach HaKodesh. 
That is the word. So what that means is that if any one of us or any one of you are sharing something that is prophecy or, or, or um, the word of Yah and it is righteous, that it is Yah, it is not the individual, right? It is, it is Yah using an individual to share something, right? Um, so we have to be clear about that. And, and, and I have to be honest, man, one of the things that I believe personally is that more people who share their individual studies with people should do more saying that more often because it's important that you don't let people put you individually up on a pedestal. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Um, we are, but grass, scripturally, we, we flesh and blood, we're men, we fade, we sin, right? And so we cannot put our hopes and our trust in man. You can't put your hopes and trust in me. I can't put my hopes and trust in you. I would like to trust my brothers and sisters to lift me up when I fall. That kind of trust, yes. But as far as for my deliverance, I have to get in here and read and study for myself, as do you, right? So it says, he will give you the teacher of righteousness and cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain. What does that mean? That means that where your land was barren and waste and desert, it will flourish again because I'm now giving you those blessings from the heavens and ain't those gold coins falling from the sky. Like uh, Quavlo Dollar said either. It's the rain, it's not coins, it's rain. We need the rain. We need the rain. You, without rain, you don't eat, right? You cannot get crops and even your cattle won't have food without rain. So you don't have crops, you don't have cattle. That's the blessings uh, that was being spoken about spoken about when it says I will give you the blessings from the heavens okay go ahead um 23 uh the former rain okay um hallelujah I told her for that uh, Matthew 23 one teacher and the threshing floors shall be filled with grain and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil then I shall repay you the years that the swarmy locust has eaten, mm. the crawling locust, and the consuming locust, mm. and the gnawing locust. Mm. My great army, which I sent among you. Pause one second. So, so that's that's beautiful understanding there. So, so as our land was devoured and laid waste by the crawling locust, the consuming locust, mm. and the gnawing locust. Remember, those are some of the same places we read about in Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. So as Israel was devoured, y'all said that was his army. Mm -hmm. He sent to devour because of our sin and disobedience. So he says, at this point, as you have turned back to me in that time, I will repay you for all the years that you missed where those locusts devoured that land. I'm gonna give you all that back because I'm gonna give you the rain the former rain and the latter rain. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then you should eat and be satisfied. Then, okay. Then you shall eat, eat and be satisfied. And I shall praise the name of Yahuwah, your, and shall praise the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, who has done with you so wondrously. And my people shall never be put to shame. Never. So if we was ever put to shame recently, then we ain't got to that point yet, right? Yeah, we agree? Yeah. Okay. And after this, it shall be that I pour out my spirit on all flesh. Hmm. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your older men dream dreams. Your young men see visions. Pause. Got to point this out. So we just read about all of those in that day. And at that time, right, with the former rain and the latter rain, and giving you back and eating to fullness in your land and all that, okay? 28, understand this carefully. And I'm not saying that, let's do this first. 28 says, and after this, right? So things we read about were, Prophecy have not happened yet. We all agreed. 
Then it says, and after this, I shall what? Pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men dream dreams, your young men see visions. Has that happened yet? Okay. So, disclaimer. Here's my disclaimer. I'm not saying that Yah can allow his spirit to call someone to dream a dream or to prophesy. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that many people say and believe that his spirit has now been poured out on all flesh. We just read, if, if we agree together, that we haven't got to that point in prophecy. So in the, in the linear event of things to come, we have not reached that point yet where he's poured out his spirit on all flesh. Just hasn't happened yet. We good? Okay, just making sure. Go ahead. And also on the male servants and on the female servants, I shall pour out my spirit in those days. In those days. Hallelujah. Go ahead. And I shall give signs in the heavens and upon the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. Has it happened yet, right? Okay. The sun is turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of Yahuwah. Before what? The coming of the great and awesome day of Yahuwah. Okay. So remember I told y'all that when we talk about atonement, there's several other terms that are synonymous. Atonement. Day of Yah. Day of judgment, and we're not talking about that final judgment in the resurrection. We're talking about this what we're reading about, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, there's a couple other as, as we think of them, I'll, I'll, I'll make mention of them. Okay. Um, 32, last one. Okay. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be delivered. Mm. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be an escape. Mm -hmm. As Yahuwah has said, and among the survivors whom Yahuwah calls. Okay, so um, 32 leads me to believe that to know the name of Yahuwah might be important. Maybe. If it's telling us that everyone who calls on his name shall be delivered. Then it also tells us where they're going to be delivered. On Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there should be an escape, right? So, I want to give you something to think about. That it may be possible that salvation and deliverance is not just a thing, an idea in our head but may also be a place on earth. Um, Messiah said, no man goes up to heaven, only he who came down, the only begotten son did declare. Mm -hmm. And Revelation clearly tells us that Yahuwah is bringing his kingdom here, right? And so when he brings his kingdom here, those who are suitable to enter into that kingdom will be safe because that place will be an escape from the things that are going on outside of those walls or those borders. Is what I'm saying makes sense? Like, if that's the place of safety at that time in scriptural prophecy, then that's a place that is called deliverance not just an idea. Does that make sense? And the more we can really see that and ingrain that into our understanding, then it gives you a, a tangible thing to understand and to acknowledge so that you have something to hold on to as far as your expectancy in deliverance, right? It's not just like what my mama said and my daddy said, and I know they're up there looking down on me because that ain't in scripture, right? Um, but when you actually know what it says, you can stand solid on your foundation and understand what you're expecting and why you're doing the things you're doing 
to get to what you expect, right? If, if, there's a, if there's a motive behind the way you operate and it's based in solid foundation, then it's not as easy for somebody to push you off your understanding, right? So moving on, um, we read that Yah says he's going to make Jerusalem a cup of reeling to all the nations gathered against her. He says he's going to strike uh, with bewilderment and blindness and that Yahuwah shields the inhabitants of Jerusalem and Judah will be like a fire pot among the nations. So we kind of walking this thing out like in order of events as we read them in prophecy. We read you know, uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Joel, and all of that. And we kind of read it just like they were just talking to those people. But we're reading how all of these prophets, in addition to talking to them that, at that time, were also illustrating a, a, a series of events that were coming in the future that we should understand. And they relate to the fall harvest, right? Okay. So let's go to Zechariah. The, the harvest, in other words, what I'm saying is, or well, the feast days so or the Moedim or the appointed times are to help us better understand these things that are coming. So as we enter into those times, years, the trumpets, the atonement, we should be thinking about these prophetic events, like what is the mind state that you have going into atonement. And what if you were going into atonement and these things that we read about in prophecy were literally happening all around you? Like how would you be operating at that time? Would you be in the place of safety at that time? And watching those around you, as we read in, in Psalms 91 last week, falling by your side, but nothing touching you because you were where you're supposed to be when you were supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be in that time, according to Torah, right? So, so that's the mindset I'm trying to, to trigger with you guys, okay? Uh, Zechariah 12, I'm going to read 1 through 13. Zechariah or Zechariah. Let's say 1 through 13. Y'all know what Zachariah or Zachariah means? You know what it means? I know you know what it means. Zachariah means Yahuwah remembers. Yah remembers. Uh, Zachariah is in the scripture there. That's, that's what I'm going to help you out. All right, whenever you're ready. The message of the word of Yahuwah against Israel. Yahuwah stretching out the heavens and laying the foundation of the earth and forming the spirit of man within him declares. See, I am making Jerusalem a cup of reeling to all the people all around and also against Yehuda. It is the siege against Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And in that day it shall be that I make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all people. All lifting it are severely injured, mm -hmm. and all the nations of the earth shall be gathered against it. Uh, who? Who's going to be gathered against it? All the nations. All the nations of the earth gathered against it and said, I'm going to make Jerusalem like a stone. Now, we read earlier about the millstone, right? Um, just a side note, if y'all have ever heard of that camp call that calls themselves the Great Millstone, where they get that from is, 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 is actually a, a verse in here that says it would be better for them if they had a great millstone tied around them and they'd be tossed into uh, the water or the sea or something like that. So when they call themselves the great millstone, they're equating themselves, and, and you can tell by the way they operate, right? They're equating themselves with that judgment against those people by saying, I am that that thing that it would be better for you that that it be tied around your neck and you be tossed in the sea and here jerusalem is being equated with something very similar right it says uh, jerusalem is going to be a cup of reeling 
and a heavy stone, and all the people lifting it severely injured, right? And it says that they're going to be all these nations gathered around it and gathered against it in that day. Go ahead. In that day, declares Yahuwah, I strike every horse with bewilderment mm -hmm. and its rider with madness. Mm -hmm. And on and on the house of Yehuda, I open my eyes. Okay, so so all the horses stricken with bewilderment, but now Yehuda. Okay, good deal. But every horse of the peoples I strike with blindness. Beautiful. So in that in that phrase there, again, peoples is synonymous with nations. Go ahead. And the leaders of Yahuwah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem are a strength to me. Mm. Through Yahuwah of hosts, their Elohim. Hallelujah. In that day, I make the leaders of Yahuwah, Yehuda, like a fire pot amongst trees. Uh -huh. And like a torch of fire in the sheaves. Uh -huh. And they shall consume all the peoples all around, on the right and on the left. And Jerusalem shall dwell again in her own place in Jerusalem. Pause for a second. So if, if remember when we read in Joel 2 and 32, when it said, um, for on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there is an escape, as Yahuwah has said, but then it also said, and among the survivors whom Yahuwah calls. Okay, so you got the people who are in Jerusalem. Now, who are those survivors? who you who are called who are not necessarily in Jerusalem. Well, you're reading about that now in Zechariah. You're reading about Judah, who is traveling around Jerusalem and outside of Jerusalem, but yeah, still with Judah. And Judah says at this point in that day, Jerusalem is strength to me. So that's home base. When I need to go power up, mm -hmm. Jerusalem. And now Judah, Judah can go outside of Jerusalem and do what Judah needs to do outside of Jerusalem and protect Jerusalem and go out of Jerusalem and come back. And it said, and among the survivors whom Yah calls. All right, go ahead, pick up. And Yahuwah shall save the tents of Yehuda first. Beautiful. So that the comeliness of the house of Dawid mm -hmm. and the comeliness of the inhabitants of Jerusalem mm -hmm. would not become greater than that of Yehuda. Mm -hmm. In that day, Yahuwah shall shield the inhabitants of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and the people among them in that day shall be like Dawid. Now, beautiful. So now, Jerusalem can protect itself to some degree, oh, yeah. because Jerusalem is going to be like Dawid, and we know how Dawid was. Uh, that's verse 8. Chapter 12, verse 8. Okay, uh, go ahead. In the house of Dawid, like Elohim, mm. like the messengers of Yahuwah before them. Okay. And it shall be in that day that I seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. So there's a sacrifice, right? Oh. Remember I was making a, an allusion for you guys with the 70 nations in Genesis 10 and the 70 beasts brought for sacrifice during the during the period of boots mm -hmm. this is the sacrifice go ahead and i shall pour on the house of dawid and on the, the inhabitants of jerusalem a spirit of favor and prayers mm. and they shall look on look on me whom they pierce Stop. read that again please and they shall look on me whom they pierce no one has heard the father's name the only begotten son does declare. They shall look on me whom they pierced. Who's speaking here? This is the word speaking. Using Zechariah, this is the word, also known as Yahusha, right? He was not in the flesh yet, but he was the one that they were referring to as the master. When they spoke of the master in, in Torah, this is who they were speaking of. There you go. And they shall look on me whom they pierced. Hasn't even happened yet, but he's declaring it. Go ahead. And they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. Didn't believe me. There you go. And they shall be a bit and, and they shall be in bitterness over him 
as a bitterness over the firstborn. Mm -hmm. In that day, the morning in Jerusalem is going to be great, mm -hmm. like the morning at Hadad Ramon in the valley of Megiddo. Oh, Megiddo. And the land shall mourn every clan by itself, mm -hmm. the clan of the house of Dawi by itself, mm -hmm. and their women by themselves, the clan of the house of Nathan by itself, mm -hmm. and their women by themselves. The clan of the house of Levi by itself, mm -hmm. and their women by themselves. Mm -hmm. The clan of Shimon by itself, and their women by themselves. Okay, beautiful. So when, when we talked about the dragon coming to wage war against the remnant, and we talked about the remnant being those who keep the Torah and have the testimony of Messiah. The reason I emphasize that when we speak about the word and when we speak about the Ruach, the spirit of Yahuwah, um, that the Ruach and the word in Torah was also called Yah's deliverance, which we would translate as Yahusha, is because that is part of his testimony, right? So when it says, the saints, by definition, according to Revelation, are also those who keep the commandments and have the testimony of Messiah. That's part of the testimony, right? So as we study and to show ourselves approved, it is important to understand that Yahusha was in the earth all throughout Torah. Again, we started with talking about you seek to find deliverance in the scriptures, but that was all written of me. Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. Well, the book at that time was Torah. Genesis to Malachi. That was that was the book. It, Matthew wasn't written yet. Sorry. <laughs> the little amen corner over here. Um, yeah, Matthew the Revelations wasn't written yet. So when he says, I come in the scroll of the book, it was talking about Genesis to Malachi. Okay? Um, moving on. Cain, though, what she he was the fire and the cloud with them in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alas, for the day of Yahuwah is near. No food. Fire devours the field. Streams have dried up. Blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm. A day is near. A day of darkness, fasting, weeping, mourning. Sound like atonement? Sound like atonement to me. Joel 1, starting 15. Joel chapter 1. Starting at 15. I'm going to go 15. Can't do that, buddy. Can't do that. 1 through 20. Joel chapter 1, 1 through 20. I hope y'all are getting this for when I have to erase it and move to the top again. Fifteen through twenty. And whenever you're ready. Alas, for the day, for the day of Yahuwah is near, and it comes as destruction from the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Is not the fool cut off before your eyes? Mm. Joy and gladness from the house of our Elohim. Mm -hmm. The seed has rotted under their clouds. Storehouses are laid waste. Granaries are broken down, mm -hmm. for the grain has withered. How the beasts moan. The herd of the cattle are restless because they have no pasture. Mm -hmm. The flocks of the sheep also perish. I cry to you, Yahuwah, for fire has consumed the pastures of the wilderness, and a flame has set on fire all the trees of the field. Mm -hmm. Even the beasts of the field cry out to you. For the water streams are dried up, and fire has consumed the pastures of the wilderness. Mm. Uh, Joel 2, I apologize. Joel 2. 1, starting at 1. Uh, I think we're going to read through 15. Joel 2. Mm 
Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. What? Lo, a shofar in Zion. Uh huh. And sound an alarm in my set apart mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble. Oh. But just, I just want to be clear. I, I know for the most part, everybody understand we we going through these fall feasts, trumpets, atonement, boots. And I'm asking here, because he's going to answer it, but I just want you to think about it as, as she's reading it. Why are we blowing a shofar in this instance, in this, in this, according to the scripture that we're reading? Now, trumpets were used to signify a lot of different things. Uh, the law of the trumpets is in the book of Numbers chapter 10. And if you want to just deal with trumpet as it deals with um, the, the uh, 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 I apologize, trumpets 10. Atonement, if you want to deal with atonement and what it deals with uh, and what it entails for Israel and for the priests and all that, we, we did a separate study on that. So this is dealing with what it's talking about as far as what's coming. And so that's what I'm asking. Why in what we're reading here is the shofar being blown? Go ahead. A day of, for the day of Yahuwah is coming, uh -huh. for it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. Mm -hmm. A people many and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor shall there ever be again after them, to the years of many generations. Pause for a second. So yeah, so the the blowing of that trumpet at the head of Joel two is to signify that the day of Yah is near, right? And that's what trumpets the Moed, the yearly the yearly appointed time that we deal with is signifying that what's coming next is the day of Yah. It's, it's, it's hailing the return of Messiah and all the things that are set in motion at that season of the year or of the age, right? So that's signifying that you're entering into the end of the age. Yearly, yearly, we have an opportunity to practice preparation for the end of the age and what mode we should be in, how we should be operating. That's, that's what they're talking about. Go ahead. And so, this, yeah, so this is delineating also what that may look like. Go ahead. Ahead of, oh, ahead of them, a fire has consumed mm -hmm. and behind them a flame burns. Mm -hmm. Before them, land is like the Garden of Eden and behind them a desert waste. And from them, there is no escape. Their appearances is like the appearances of horses, and they run like steeds. At the noise of chariots, they leap over mountaintops as the noise of a flaming fire consuming stubble as a mighty people set apart in battle array. Before them, people are in anguish. All the flames become flushed. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of battle. Everyone goes on his way, and they do not break rank, and they do not press one another. Everyone goes in his own path. They fall among the weapons, but they do not stop. They rush on the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earth shall tremble before them. The heavens shall shake. Hmm. Sun and moon shall be darkened. Same time frame. We keep talking about this time frame. It says that time frame, sun and the moon are going to be darkened. Go ahead. The, oh, uh, and the stars will draw their brightness. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah shall give forth his voice before his army. Hmm. For, he, for his camp is very great. For mighty is the doer of his word. Mm -hmm. For the day of Yahuwah is great and very awesome, and who does bear it? Again, confirm, we're talking about the day of Yah. Go on. Yet even now, declares Yahuwah, turn to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. So it's, it's so after reading all of that, and it's talking about this army that's coming to destroy everything that's in its path. It says, now hearing that, even now is not too late, basically is what it's saying. 
If you turn to me with all your heart, with what? Fasting, weeping, weeping mourning. What does that sound like? Atonement. 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 Even now, if you turn to me with fasting, weeping, and mourning, go ahead. And tear your heart and not your garment. That's something that 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 is typical among the scribes and the Pharisees. Yeah, they yeah. Oh, I'm mourning. Look at me. I'm going to throw dust on my, in the air and cover my face and all that. Y'all say, I'm not looking for all that. I'm Tear your heart, not your garment. Uh, take this opportunity during atonement to, to be harsh on yourself. When all the rest of the year you've been harsh on everybody else. Turn, turn and do some self-reflection, some introspective looking about what you need to change. That's what atonement is about, right? Go ahead. And turn back to Yahuwah, your Elohim. Mm -hmm. For he shows favor and is compassionate, mm -hmm. patient, and of great loving commitment. And he shall relent concerning the evil. Mm -hmm. Who knows? He might turn and relent and leave a blessing behind. Mm -hmm. A grain offering. His blessing is a grain offering? Wow. And a drink offering. Drink offering, okay. For Yahuwah, your Elohim. <laughs> Blow a shofar in Zion. Mm -hmm. Set apart a fast. Call the assembly. Hallelujah. We read that before. All right. So uh, let's let's go to Isaiah. We we about to wrap this up. Wrapping this up for the day. Um, because we got to deal with this controversy. So we're gonna read what y'all say is come there and listen, and that how y'all has indignation for all these nations. That includes uh the seventy rebellious. This, that includes the 70 nations and rebellious Israel, right? 70 nations includes rebellious Israel um, and their armies. Uh, he has wrath with their divisions. Their slain are thrown out. And it says there's going to be a stench from their corpses. And you will even see the host of heaven right away. He says his sword is going to be drenched in the heavens. And he said it all is going to come down on Edom. Interesting. Says Yah is going to have a slaughtering ambassador and their land is going to be drenched in blood. And this is all because he has to have a recompense for the controversy of Zion. What's the controversy of Zion? What, what did these people do to Zion that the Messiah had to come and draw that sword? Because he said once he draws a sword, he can't put it out, can't put it back to the soaked in blood. Isaiah 34, starting in verse 1. Go read 1 through 8. Isaiah 34, 1 through 8. Looking for my shot. There it is, in my fire. Isaiah 34, 1 through 8. Or Yeshia, or Yeshiyahu. Whatever you're comfortable with, Isaiah, Yeshia, Yeshiyahu, Yeshia. You know, some people use Yeshia. Same name. Yeshia. Whenever you're ready. Come near, you nations, to hear, and listen, you people. Let the earth hear, and all that is in it, the world, and all its offsprings. For the displeasure of Yahuwah is against all the nations. Some of the nations. All the nations. Part of the nations. All the nations. A few of the nations. All the nations. Okay. <laughs> and his wrath against all their divisions. Mm -hmm. He shall put them under the ban. He shall give them over to the slaughtering. Oh my. And their slain be thrown out, and their stench rise up from their corpse. Mm. The mountains shall be melted with their blood. Pam, that's a lot of blood. That's a lot of blood. That's a lot of blood. And all the hosts of the heavens shall rot away. Mm. And the heavens shall be rolled up like a scroll. Mm. And all their hosts fade like a leaf fading on the vine mm -hmm. and like the fading uh on a fig tree mm -hmm. for my sword shall be drenched in the heavens look 
it come down it comes down on Edom mm -hmm. and on the people of my curse for judgment so so I want to submit to you that that I do believe this is talking about the people but I believe this is also possibly talking about the place would you agree so when it says it comes down on Edom think people but also think place where is it at on your on your ancient map okay what the sword the sword of Yahuwah shall be filled with blood mm -hmm. it shall be made overflowing with fatness mm -hmm. and with the blood of lambs mm -hmm. and goats with the fat of kidneys and rams for Yahuwah has a slaughtering in Bajra mm -hmm. and a great slaughtering in the land of Edom mm -hmm. and wild oxen shall come down with them and young bulls with bulls and their land shall be drenched with blood mm. and their dust made fat with fatness mm. for it is a day of vengeance of Yahuwah, mm -hmm. the year of recompense mm -hmm. for the cause of zion so that word cause there and if you're reading from the kjb is rendered as controversy and they mean the same thing this this is what yah is doing because of the controversy Zion. This is him reconciling everything and making it all right. Uh, I made a reference earlier. I was, talk, I was talking to Real. I say it's, it's like it's like pulling that brick out of that Jenga tower and it falling apart. Well, well, this is him putting it all back together. And when he put it all back together, it's gonna be right. And he's gonna make sure, right? Um, so in this, he's saying that the land is gonna be overflowing with blood. The blood of the nations, the blood of the oxen, the blood of the kidneys of the rams. The it's going to be a sacrifice. Yeah, refers again to a sacrifice. Uh, and he says, this is a slaughtering. This is a sacrifice, right? And he calls it in verse 8, the day of the vengeance of Yah, right? Um, hmm, there was another scripture I was going to reference, and I, it escaped me just that quick. Um, it made me think of it made me think of get a counseling to move on um hmm. okay so here yah says he's going to gather all the nations again together um in the valley of jehoshaphat jehoshaphat just means decision valley of decision and he says about this incident that he's going to send forth the sickle literally says it because the harvest is right so again we're talking about the fall harvest season and what it means prophetically is not just talking about the agricultural harvest i know we were agricultural people and what we submit to you is that all those agricultural references were for us to learn from because we're an agricultural people to help us understand him. And so when he sends his sickle, as it says in Revelations, is to reap people because it's harvest season. It's the fall harvest season. Joel 3. Joel 3, 1 through 6. Joel chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. When you ready. For look, in those days, and at that time, when I turned back the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem. It's a time step, once again. In those days, at that time, and then to add on to that, when I turned back the captivity of not just Jerusalem, but also uh, Yehuda, uh, Jerusalem. Oh, what did I say? Yehuda. Thank you. Not just Judah, but Judah and Jerusalem. Uh, think about the two sticks in the prophecy of Ezekiel. When we take Judah and Ephraim and put them back together and combine them into one stick. It's talking about the same time frame. Go ahead. Then I shall gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of decision. Uh -huh. And I shall enter into judgment with them there for my people. Mm -hmm. my inheritance, Israel, mm -hmm. whom they have scattered among the nations. 
and they had divided up my land. So you're telling me even in this future time that we're talking about, in that day, at that time, when I bring Judah and Jerusalem together, that Israel is still his inheritance and Israel is still his people? He hadn't switched to spiritual Israel or nothing like that? Oh, okay. Okay, just make sure. And they have cast lots for my people uh -huh. and have given a young man for a whore and sell the girl for wine and drank it. Mm. And also, what are you to me, O Zor and Zidon and all the coast of Philistia? Real quick. So are Sidon and Philistia are all places in Palestine. Uh, give me one second and you, you can come to the mic. So when this is talking about bringing his people back and what they did to his people, his inheritance and their land, then he's like, okay, and who, and who gonna be mad about this? Okay, Zoar, Sidon, Philistia, Palestine. What, what are you gonna do about it? Because he's, he calling them out saying, I know you're gonna be mad because who in Palestine right now? You got, you got two groups of people in Palestine right now fighting with each other, but one group is pushing the other one out saying, I want Palestine to be all mine. And the other one saying, no, Muhammad gave us Palestine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But but those other people who are pushing them out still claim Palestine as their own. So he's he calling them out right here. What are you to me, Zohar, Sidon, and, and all of you in Palestine? Just finish that last verse and then she can come to the mic. Mike. Um, and if you are repaying are you are you repaying me? Uh -huh. And if you are repaying me, mm -hmm. I will swiftly and speedily return your reward on your head. So basically, he said, "Do something." Do something. That's basically what he said. Well, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Do something about. It. Well, what you say? This is what Russia said. <laughs> Russia said something. Russia said something. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, come to the mic. Turn it off and let me finish. I just wanted to get that point out for us to make sure I didn't forget it. Uh, no problem. I, I'm glad y'all finished because I want to go back just a little bit where we were at um, Isaiah 34, um, verse 4, where he says, And all hosts of the heavens shall rot away. Who are the hosts yes. that they're referring to? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. So scripturally, when we when we read about the hosts of heaven, it's a reference to the Melakim. So you may hear them reference as Melakim. You may hear them reference as Elohim. Elohim is, is, is plural, so you have to read context um, because we just read about the house of David being made like Elohim, but if you weren't sure, it said like the messengers of Yah. So in this reference, when he says the host of the heavens and them riding away, but well, he ain't talking about the righteous Melakim. He's talking about the wicked Melakim. And what he's talking about at the same time in the same uh in the same writing or prophecy where we read about the scrolls of the heavens being rolled up, meaning what I take that to mean, to be honest with you, what I take that to mean, um, what's preventing you now when you look out your window from, speak, from, from seeing the spiritual things that are going on is going to be removed, right? So you look outside and you see the clouds, you see the blue sky and the dome or not the dome. I don't know if people believe in that, whatever. Um, all that is going to be removed. And so, you know how we always make these references to things being done on the spiritual first and then in the physical? Uh, we read about Yah sending out his Malachim to do battle in a place that he sent in the nation of Israel to do battle in first. And then he tells Israel, go and take it because the battle is already given to you. Well, he already sent his Melakim to do battle. So what I'm saying and what this is saying, I believe, is that that's going to be removed. And you will now not just know it because of your belief or because of your faith, but you'll be able to see it. The wars that are going on in the heavens, you'll be able to see that the Melakim are doing that battle. But you'll see more than likely the conclusion of those battles where... Those righteous Melakim are 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 overcoming those Melakim that are being cut asunder, so to speak. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. 
Yep, that cleared it up. Thanks. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's that's an excellent question, sis. Um, it, it's it's so much here that it's hard to stop and emphasize everything. But yeah, those the questions help. It give, it gives us the opportunity to dig a little bit deeper. Um, because even even though this turns into you know a two and a half three hour study, we're still leaving a lot on the table here. Um, so the last thing she read was where y'all tells these people who are in the land that we know of as Palestine now, Palestine, Israel, Jerusalem, he said, what are you going to do about it when I do this? Are you repaying me? If you are repaying me, I would swiftly and speedily return your reward on your own head. A lot of people don't realize this, but scriptures say everybody going to get a reward. When it's all said and done, the righteous get a righteous reward and the wicked get a wicked reward. So he said, I'll give you a reward right now. If you're ready for it, <laughs> I'll make you famous. Verse 5. For you have taken my silver and my gold, Queen of England, uh -huh. and brought my treasures into your temple. Uh -huh. And the people of Yehuda and the people of Jerusalem, you have sold to the sons of your wand. To remove them far from their borders. Okay, pause there. Let's deal with Yawan. Ben Yawani or Ben Yavani. Yavani. Who is Yawan? Y'all know? Nope. Just to bring it out of this mystic realm where we don't know what we're reading and to, and to bring it into context, who is Yawan? H 3125. Patronomic. From H3121, a Javanite, the descendants of Greece. Wow. You Greece. sold my people, Judah, into the sons of Greece, is what that's saying. I have a problem with that, is what he's saying. This is part of the controversy, is what he's saying. You got to pay for that. I know they sinned, and I know that I allowed you to oppress them a little bit because of their sin, but you took it too far. And as my stepfather used to say, and I don't quote him much, it's time for your comeuppance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pick up with verse 7 of Joel chapter 3. See, I am stirring them up out of the place to which you have sold them. And I shall return on your own head what you have done. Uh -huh. And I shall sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Jehuda, of Yehuda. Mm. And they shall sell them to the Shebites, mm. to a nation far off, for Yehuda has spoken. I didn't say it. Yeah, I said it. Go ahead. I'll read the word. Uh, you're going to read? I didn't tell you. You just took off. Oh, it's all good. It's cool because you're going to read through 16. Okay. Proclaim this among the nations. Mm -hmm. Prepare for battle. Mm. Wake up the mighty men. Mm. Let all the men of battle draw near. Mm -hmm. Let them come up. Okay. Beat your plowshares into swords mm -hmm. and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. So I love that because he's saying... It, the way I take that to mean let those who think uh, they are strong say I'm strong. Like you, you, you're really weak. You don't know it, but he's telling you you're weak. So he said, let 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 these puny armies and 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 all of they sorceries and witchcraft come on up and let them puff themselves up with this false sense of strength and pride. Come on up. Go ahead. When he say wake up your mighty men, I'm always reminded of that uh, movie Troy mm -hmm. when Agamemnon you know Troy, you know what's his name? Achilles. Achilles, yeah. and they had to go wake him up. Yeah, they stood there for hours, <laughs> probably waiting on Achilles. Achilles, Achilles. <laughs> yeah, call your mighty man. Yeah, go wake him up. Hasten and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Oh, Yahuwah, let your mighty men come down here. Yep. Let the nations be aroused and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. 
Mm. And for there I shall sit to judge all the nations on every side. Put in the sickle, for the harvest has grown ripe. Mm. Come, go down, for the wine press is filled. Mm. The vats overflow, for their evil is great. Mm. Crowds, crowds in the valley of decision. For the day of Yahuwah is near in the valley of decision. Mm. Sun and moon shall become dark. There you go again. Stars shall withdraw their brightness. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah shall roar from Zion mm -hmm. and give forth his voice from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahuwah shall be a refuge for his people mm. and a stronghold for the children of Israel. So, so what I'm reading here, correct me if I'm wrong, is while all this is going on and he called all the nations up, including Israel, because Israel got to be there too. They are one of those 70 nations that Yahuwah is a refuge and a stronghold for his people and those who have attached themselves to him. Listen, I don't want to, I don't want to confuse anyone. That's the deliverance. Israel, those who have attached themselves to Israel, you have a stronghold in Yahuwah, right? You have refuge in Yahuwah. But I want y'all to think about this. If we look at atonement like this, and we take all of this, what we read into context, now think about the celebration of booths after that. Man. Like if you come through that, man. And then you deal with boots. You you take that feast and that celebration in a whole different context Damn. because you came out on the other side of on the other side of something Damn. that Wait. showed you what scripture keeps saying. And they will know that I am Yahuwah and I have hastened it. Right. Damn. So how do you know? Like we all have belief and we all we all have an expectancy based on what we individually have gone through in our lives and what we read. But we go through that together. First of all, we've developed a bond. Oh, yeah. I know we say we found it now. We be family for real, for real then. Yeah. The rebels purged out. You come out of that and go into boots. It's a brand new thing. The real boots, not, not the shadow of boots that we practice yearly, but the actual boots dwelling with Yah, dwelling with Yahusha. It's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different story. So think about these things as we enter into the season of this fall harvest, right? Uh, we're going to wrap it up there this week. We got one more portion of this next week, and we're going to deal with the two messengers and the two harvests in the spiritual. Um, the sharp sword, the rule of nations, and treading the wine press, right? That's next week. Great job. All right, family. Toda for. Great job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Toda for tuning in. And um, man, if you guys have any other questions, now is the time. Questions or comments. Dang. Hallelujah. Dang. Uh, Big Sis Antoinette, the mic is yours. What exact days, um, according to the Hebrew calendar, is the trumpets and atonement. Uh, give me one second, I'll get my calendar for you. Because I don't have it memorized. Um, so according to, according to our calendar, um, we're coming up on trumpets. Trumpets is going to fall on the 14th. So I'm going to list all these for y'all real quick, since, since we're all here together. Um, if you want the full calendar, go to the videos we did on the calendar on the YouTube channel. So I'll list these dates that are coming up, okay? So Trumpets falls on September 14th. As far as the Hebrew calendar, if I write seven, 
one, what I'm saying is that's the seventh month, the first day of the month. Okay? That's my shorthand. Okay? Um, atonement falls on September 22nd. As far as the Hebrew calendar, that is no, I apologize. So sundown. Let me let me be clear here. September twenty second to twenty third. So sundown the twenty second to sundown the twenty third. Does that make sense? Sundown September twenty second to sundown September twenty third. Um on the Hebrew calendar, that is sundown on the 9th to sundown on the 10th, okay? Sundown to sundown. Um, Sukkot, boots, tabernacles, however you want to phrase it. Begins September 28th. First day. To um, October fifth. And that is going to be on the Hebrew calendar. Uh, 715 to 721. Okay, so now I, I started that by saying according to our calendar. Um, so we have been we have been keeping the uh, Moedim or the appointed times for five years now? Six years? Five or six years. Um, and uh, we, we've done studies on YouTube, we've done YouTube videos about how we arrived at what we believe to be uh, the Hebrew calendar um, and where we're at in our study. It's been a progressive thing as we, as we learn, we augment, we change. There's some things we had off in the first year or two or three, and, and, and I've been pretty open about talking about those things in the videos we did subsequent to the first ones. Um, and so that's that's what we have, and I and I think that we are really close to nailing that down. Um, but I'm but I'm open minded. Like when I talk to brothers and sisters, and they have new information, I'm always open to hearing new information. So that's what I mean when I say this is what we have on our calendar. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question okay. um, because I think that it's coming up in the fall feast. Isn't there like a double Sabbath? I can't think of what it was called though. Yeah, that's, that's atonement. So the atonement is gonna fall on, the, the literal day is gonna fall on a Friday or on a, or on a sixth day of the week. If we get away from the, the terminology, uh, atonement is gonna fall on the sixth day of the week and it's gonna be a Sabbath, no, no work and a fast um and then the immediate following day is the weekly seven so that's your that's your double seven and the beautiful thing about that is uh, right. when you read it in torah it, if you read it in hebrew it literally says the shabbat shabbaton so it's literally the shabbat shabbat in the torah so you guys have to that's what i was looking for you guys have to prepare for the shabbat on that thursday right can you get rid Yes, I was I was asking that um, okay. asking that question just because I didn't want to get my days mixed up because I was going to be traveling or trying to travel for boots. And I'm, I'm glad she asked when the actual dates were. OK, hallelujah. Yeah. So what Rhea was saying in the background, I don't know if you guys can hear. She was saying that it, it will be good on uh, for atonement that you prepare for your Shabbat on that fifth day of the week. 
because you you won't be able to prepare your Shabbat meal on atonement because you shouldn't be cooking and you shouldn't be doing any work on atonement. So Thursday is when you will prepare your meal for Saturday. Does that make sense? Because you can eat Friday evening. Yeah, as soon as sundown, sundown at the end of atonement, you can eat even though it's a Shabbat. But you can't eat or you shouldn't eat Look at the study we did on the topic, because we go into that, to fast or not to fast, we go, we go into all of that. Um, but usually atonement includes a fast for most people. Some people are done, just being honest with you. Dang, crock pot sound good, yep. You know that's gonna hold up, and you know it's gonna be good, and you know you're gonna be ready for it. You you you'll be ready for whatever you put together by the time sundown hit, especially if you know if that's like the only time you fast. We always need to do tacos. Tacos, <laughs> tacos or something like that. Yeah. Better tacos Thursday. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <sighs> oh, you look tired, huh? You over there yawning on camera? Look at you. Oh, hi, question. <laughs> What's your question? What does Jehoshaphat? Decision, decision, decision. So literally, yeah. You want me? You want me to look at it for you from the strongest coordinates? Uh, shalom, Koti. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Jehoshaphat. Shabbat shalom. Uh, that is. Let me get back to it. Give me one second. They stab you in the back and they claim they come looking. But to have you in the region, in the valley of decision. Uh, what scripture was that I'm looking for? That is um, Joel 3 verses 12. Joel 3 and 12? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get to it. The book of Joel. Uh, one of my bots was asking about the literal rendering of Jehoshaphat. So I said, I'm reading from the Strong's Concordance. It is, it is H 30 and 92, Hebrew Strong's Concordance 30 and 92, from H 3068 and H 81.99, they say Jehovah judged Jehoshaphat or Yahoshaphat. The name of six Israelites, also a valley near Jerusalem, compared to H 3146, which is an Israelite. Let's see. Uh, yeah. So they say Jehovah, but when you look at the Hebrew lettering, it's Yahuwah. I love how they change that stuff. So Yahuwah. And Shaphat, Shaphat, which is to judge, that is to pronounce sentence by implication, to vindicate, to punish, by extension, to govern, to passively lit, uh, to passively litigate, literally or figuratively, to avenge, to condemn, co to, to contend, to defend, to execute judgment to be a judge or judgment, to plead, to reason, to rule. So Jehoshaphat technically is a compound word. Even in Hebrew, we have compound words. I should probably say, especially in Hebrew, which is Yahuwah Shaphat, Yahuwah judges. Yes. Uh, Akoti Angelique, was she coming up to the mic with a question? Or was she saying shalom? You know, 
don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe she was saying she's not a she student. I don't know. All right. Any other questions? She left. Gotcha. 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 All right, fam. Hey, while I'm on the mic, I want to say Toda for my Ak and the Koti for the for the love gift they sent me in my Isha. The shirt I'm wearing, the Black Love Matters, came from Aki um, Eric and his Isha Elaine of E Square. Y'all check out their YouTube channel too. They uh, they do um, a ministry based on relationships, and it's a beautiful thing they got going on. I really enjoy it, what they do. Uh, Toda, I really love the shirt. Appreciate it. Look good on Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. You rocking it. <laughs> Represent. Uh, y'all got a room. Y'all got a room. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Told I. Um, ben, were you trying to come to the mic with a question? Literally? No? All right. Well, no, no forward. questions. No questions over here. No questions? All right. Well, man, told on for joining us, brother. It was a blessing. Dang, it sure was. All right, well, we're going to let y'all go so y'all can eat and get the rest of your Shabbat rest on. And I'm going to do the same over here. And I look forward to um, getting back with y'all again this coming Shabbat Eve. Um, when we pick up the next section of studying scriptures, y'all will. So our family, y'all bless. Much ahaba. And we'll see you next time. Oh, wait, Tasha got her hand up. Tasha got her hand up. I mean, Tasha I mean, got her hand up. You be waiting on purpose, sis. You you wait till I. <laughs> yes, you do. This is all good. <laughs> I'm gonna wait till. No, I was no, I was looking on. I was no, I was looking. I was looking through my notes. Okay, that's why want? I had to like skim my notes to see what I missed. Because we was talking about in numbers, you said that was the law of trumpets, and I thought you said where it was uh, for atonement, but I didn't write it down. Mm -mm. I did. I was looking at my notes. Uh, what I said was. Oh, you didn't say for. No, what I said was, if you want to dig deeper into atonement specifically, as it relates to Israel, as it relates to the priests, um, and as it relates uh, to Messiah. I said we did a we did a study just on atonement, um, and it is definitely on the YouTube channel, and I think it's on the website. Now y'all gotta forgive me. It's it's a lot of stuff that that we've done, especially recently, that I just haven't uploaded to the website yet. Like even videos that I haven't uploaded to the website. Um, it's just so much going. It's hard to keep up with all that. But I believe atonement is on the website, but it's definitely on the YouTube channel. I, I, also, I don't be waiting to the end. <laughs> I also um, went to record the study on. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, during the week, but I had some technical issues, and it didn't. It didn't actually record. I, I spent the time to record it, but when I went back to look at the recording, it didn't record over half of it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that again this week. I'm gonna have to use a different uh, device to record it, uh, but. I, I didn't forget. I did try to do it. It just didn't happen. So I will record uh, the study on much as I can give it to y'all. All right. What else you got, uh, Koti Latasha? You got to say first, you got to say, okay. Hey, <laughs> and then she going to go over. <laughs> you got to say, okay. And she bought Shalom, y'all. Then she going to say, all right, y'all. For real, for real this time. Shabbat Shalom and y'all bless. See y'all next time. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. All right. Love y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. No, I do have one more question. I swear this is it. <laughs> you serious? Go ahead. It's all good. Come on. I, I didn't want to ask because y'all said I had to wait until you said Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> yeah. uh, go ahead, what you got? Yeah, you know, when you was talking about in um when he was saying bring the heavens to the earth and that was in a book of revelations, right? Twenty one? 
Yeah, let me find that specific. Uh, was that your question? Where is it? Or you already got it? No, I was going to ask. So, no, I, I wrote it down, but I was going to ask. So, with, cause when he write it, when he says it, he going to bring the heavens to the earth. Mm -hmm. Where do they get? He's saying that they going to he going to take them up into the clouds. You see what you're doing. I know what you're doing. Uh, that's that's part of the rapture doctrine. No, 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 the rapture. Not, no, no, that's for tabernacle. No, I'm not doing it. She's trying to be tabernacle. She's just trying to be tabernacle. I'm not doing it. No, it's all right. So, so yeah, that is. I'm not doing it. That is that is part of the doctrine of the rapture because um, so a, a lot of rules a lot of rules go around the fact because it's fact that scripture says that he's going to rapture us up right so you can't you can't get around the fact that there is writings that say we will be raptured up the question is what happens after that when you read the rest of that 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 um, text. It says, you will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, and you will forever be with Messiah. But it doesn't say that you're going to stay in heaven with Messiah. At that point, the mission is all of the stuff that we were just reading about him coming down and taking vengeance and exacting his, his judgment, right? So so all of the, all the scriptures where we read where it says, vengeance is mine, says Yahuwah and all of that, um, that's talking about um, us, us being translated and receiving spiritual bodies. Um, and so that's where they get that from. Um, that you're going to go to heaven and you'll forever be with the Messiah because that's what it says. The issue is just not understanding the rest of prophecy. You have to keep all of these things whole. You have to keep scriptures and the Brit Kadashah so, so Torah and Brit Kadashah, Old Testament, so-called New Testament, all have to match. They all have to coincide if we believe, if we believe that Yah does not contradict Himself. Now, if we believe that Yah contradicts Himself, then you know you could you could be all over the place. But Messiah said, "No man goes to heaven." Right? That's what He said. Right. So, uh, us going to heaven to reside in heaven where Yah is, that, that can't be what that was saying. And so match that with all of the rest of the prophecies to talk about uh, the kingdom and where the kingdom is going to be and what the kingdom is going to be like. We read in Isaiah where it talks about the land flourishing again, the palms, the trees, uh, lions, lions laying with lambs, which is why I don't get too far into the debate about meat or no meat because the original dietary law was not meat. And the dietary law that we return to will not be meat, right? That that was the perfect uh, dietary law. Um, but all those things deal with a natural world still being in existence, right? And it also deals with, at least for a period, um, other nations still coming up to Jerusalem um, three times a year for the sacrifice, which we're going to get to that next week. Uh, for the sacrifice and what happens to them if they're not presenting themselves three times a year the same way we were supposed to present ourselves three times a year and so if they're going to come up to Jerusalem and the government the righteous government of Israel is in place at that time then that has to be on earth it's not it's not in the heavens um, and um that's that's the thing. It's like you got you got to keep it all in context. Uh, come on up to the mic. Right, you got it. Yeah. Hey, I, I uh, kind of laying back and off of the the, the question she had. Mm -hmm. I, uh, my thoughts is I think um, how Christianity has conditioned us that we think of the rapture as one event mm -hmm. when the gathering the second exodus is a separate event from the time when he was going to burn you know ezekiel 38 i believe it is mm -hmm. 
he's gonna burn everything up. We're gonna be caught away with him. Then he's gonna, you know, light a match, right? And then the New Jerusalem is coming down. Yeah. That that's two events rather than one. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I would I would agree that it's like we read scriptures and a lot of times because we're reading it um, as a rapid succession of events, we presume that it's all in this space of time. Uh, like you say, when you read Ezekiel, and that's, that's really one of my favorite places to read it, because before I found out about the Apocrypha and Second Ezra, I thought that was the most clear place to read the series of events that's coming. Um, if you start in 30, 36, 37, 37, dry bones, um, and then everything that happens after that, all the way through the end of the chapter, you read about all that stuff happened. Um, it's, it's not all at the same time. And so even when we talk about the stuff that we just read today, the gathering into the wilderness, um, the protection that we read about for those who make their refuge, Yahuwah, in Psalms 91. There's still a lot of other stuff going on outside of that protection, and we still haven't made it into the land yet. And so, end time prophecy, you know, it's 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 a it's a it's a lot of things that happen, and they're not all. Bad. You know, there there was there was a lot of Israelites that know the Israelites that was making fun of people that that believe that Genesis fifteen thirteen was talking about uh, the four hundred year prophecy being here in America and 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 the curses being over with um 400 years after 1619 which which would have been 2020 so 1619 would have been 20, uh, 400 years 2020 would have been after okay would have been after 20 the, the 400 years and there was a lot of bruises was like okay so we ain't home yet so that mean you was wrong about the prophecy like where I thought the Messiah was coming back. I thought that was it. I thought we was going to be taken back home. That's not what he said. Yeah. That's not what he yeah. said. It just, it just said the That's not what he said. He exactly. said, I'm going to judge. Yeah, it said I was going to judge. And then if we look at... Don't pack your man. Yeah, if we look at the example of the judgment given to us, if we look at the pattern given to us in Egypt, that judgment took a minute. It was a succession of things that were a part of that judgment, right? And so um, I, I think I would agree with you that... that you know, th there's several things that you may call a gathering or a rapture. Um, in addition to that one that we read about, where it says, I'm gonna gather them up to, to uh, with me. I'm, I know I'm butchering that as I'm trying to paraphrase that. Um, yeah, and they will be translated. Um, yeah, that, I, I think it's a series of events and that's part of the culmination. I think that in incident is part of the culmination. Remember we just read in Zechariah about the house of Dawid? No, about Jerusalem being like Dawid and the house of Dawid being like Elohim, that corresponds, right? When, 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 when you talk about receiving your spiritual bodies, even when we talk about um, in the resurrection, um, the relationship between us not being the same as in our physical existence, right? Um, you're talking about a period where us at that point will be like the messengers. So you, if your base of operation is in Yahweh, when I say us, Yahweh, um, your base of operation being in the kingdom in Jerusalem, in literal Jerusalem, and you have submitted yourself and conformed yourself to fit in that kingdom I, I this this is the 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 um analogy i like to use remember when we was in kindergarten and you had the the block or the ball with the triangle and the, and the circle and the oval and the square on all the different sides and you had the blocks and you had to learn how to fit the star in the star hole, you could try to force the star in the circle hole all you want to, it's not gonna go. And so Yah in, 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 in his creation of man to be in his likeness, 
which is not complete yet, is telling us that when my kingdom come down, there's, there's some spots here for you, but you got to be this shape to fit when that kingdom comes. And if you ain't that shape, you're not going to fit. And so once we're in there and we're ruling from that place, there's a period of time where you're going to be going in and out and ministering to those who still need to be ministered to because he said we're going to be a kingdom of priests. And you're going to be ministering to them in the same way that the Malachim ministered to us now. Right? You, 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 you will be able to move and to exist just like they exist. That's book. I'm not making that up. Uh, we're, it's actually part of what we get into next week. Um, we, we, we read about a series of events that happen. And so um, we know that the Messiah from Revelation, we know that the Messiah comes back with 144,000 ready to do battle. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a scripture where he says he's going to call, he, he's going to call up a certain amount of people, perhaps 144,000, mm -hmm. and they're going to be translated. They're going to be given heavenly bodies. Mm -hmm. But we also know they return back to the earth for war, mm -hmm. right? There's also a scripture that tell us that he tucks the children of Israel in the nook. Right. And he tells them, he calls it the sheepfold. Right. And he tells them to rest in their chambers for a little while while he go and do right. some do some damage. And then there's another scripture that tells us the children of Israel look out and they see him coming mm -hmm. again. And it looks like his clothes have been dipped in blood. Right. And they say, wait. Where you coming from, man? You 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 you're dripping blood. Mm -hmm. And he say, I'm coming from Eden. I'm coming from taking care of some business. It was right. long overdue. Right. Right. Then we know in Revelation came. Yeah. Then we know in Revelations, the bridegroom comes and knocks on the door. Mm -hmm. And they open the door and they let him in. And then there's a wedding feast. Right. And so um came. So, and so there's a lot, there, there's like it's it's like right up the line. Now, when you add the, I don't know if y'all get into um, the Dead Sea Scrolls, mm -hmm. but when you add the Dead Sea Scrolls to it, the Dead Sea Scrolls said that there is a 40 year war yeah. fought. Yeah. In, and that's confirmation. In, yeah. Right. That is coming. It's going to so, be a 40 year war. That that relates to what, what you were bringing up, Ak, about uh, Ezekiel 38, but it also corresponds exactly with what we read in 2nd Ezra in the Apocrypha. And, and they go into the. They go into the details of how that's meted out. The nation's coming up against uh, the eagle and all that type of stuff. Uh, but yeah, Dead Sea Scrolls, as we said, confirms it. And it says that, you know, and, and, and they go into the armies and how they would be divided, how they will be divided. Uh, and it says that that war alone is a 40 year war. Think about it. Think, just think about it. And, 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 and logically, he says, oh, that's what I, remember I said that it escaped me what I wanted to make reference to. Thank you, bro. You help me bring it, help bring it back to my memory. So the law says that a land is not healed, but by the blood of him who defiled the land, right? And so we we just read about all the people who came and defiled our land, and now we're reading about him calling the people back to the land for this great slaughtering. So in Ezekiel, it says. It's going to be so much blood at this feast and at this slaughtering that he refers to as the day of Yah. Uh, that he's going to call the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven to come feast at this slaughtering. It also says the blood is going to be past the horses bright. Now, I, I don't know what size horses they got over there, but I'm, I'm 6'2", and I know that standing next to a horse, the horse's bridle is about up here. That's a lot of blood, right? And so if we think about this logically and agriculturally, first of all, how long would it take for that blood to seep into the land, to actually be absorbed into the soil? And then uh, thinking about it agriculturally, even in ancient times, we understood that blood actually added nutrients into the soil. So we're talking about a land that's been devastated and laid waste. And he says, I'm going to cause that land to flourish and to, and to be rebirthed and, and flourish like you've never seen it before. And I'm going to give it back to you 
and make up for the times when I sent the locust. To, well, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to drench it with blood. And so it's going to take time. And then we read in Ezekiel where it says he's going to send people. And it says it in, uh, in uh, Dead Sea Scrolls as well. So he's going to send people through um, in, in droves to bury the bones <laughs> in shifts. They're going to work in shifts to bury the bones, to, to, to gather up the, the, the implements of war. And then eventually he's going to say, you're going to start taking those implements of war and turning them into um, pruning tools and, yeah. and agricultural tools because you're not going to need them anymore. Yeah. And so we're, we're talking about that place, again, being called, even in the book of Ezekiel, if I remember, in the end of Ezekiel and in the, book, in the end of Isaiah, it says that place shall be called Yah is there. And another one, it says that place will be called deliverance or the walls will be called deliverance, right? So that's what I'm submitting to you. That place, once, once that event transpires, it's gonna be known to the rest of the inhabitants of the world that if you're seeking deliverance, it's there at that place where the gates of Jerusalem are. And, and, and the, 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 the wonderful thing about that, so I mean, y'all tell us that in that day, for this 40 year war, the weak among them gonna be like David, and the strong and, and the strong among, and, and the house of David gonna be like the Malachim. Mm -hmm. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, it said that during this forty year war, Israel was giving it to them so hard that they Malachim, the fallen, the fallen angels had to come and fight with them. Mm -hmm. They had to come fight with them because Israel was Israel was giving it to them so hard that. All the fallen angels and all the demons had to come fight with them. And then at this point, it do it say that they 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 try to wear Israel out. Mm -hmm. So the, the battle gets intense at this point because it said that Israel, you know, the soldiers do get wore out. Mm -hmm. So you know, the people are protected in the sheepfold, you know, because not only 144,000 translate, you know, come back with, with Messiah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the people, the majority of the people are tucked in the sheepfold. Yep. Maybe one day Shlomo will do that, that study and share with you guys. What you ain't going to be up here volunteering me like you volunteered. I, I, I will do that, y'all. Where the scripture in says time. sheepfold was. <laughs> uh, but during this time, the Akin, the Akin, these warriors that have been translated is going out fighting. This, for, this takes place for 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, and and the beautiful thing too, and I know this could, this could really spawn into a whole spot. nother. Latasha's fault. Yeah, she did it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, this could this is spawn into a whole nother discussion, but a lot of people don't realize that the the four hundred and forty the one hundred and forty four thousand twelve thousand from each tribe. Mm -hmm. Scripture never says that these are the only people that received deliverance. It never said that. It, it said there was one hundred and forty four thousand, but then beyond them, it said there was a number too many to count. Right, so so the hundred and forty-four thousand have a specific job and purpose, but it never said those are the only ones that were going to see receive deliverance. Yeah, yeah, the sheepfold. That's a that's a good yeah, it, that's a, yeah. What? Well, so next week you'll be talking about tabernacles. Um, we're going we're going we got a little bit more of this judgment, and then yes, we're gonna wrap up with tabernacles. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And then um, after that, we're going back to the priesthood. Okay. Cool beans. Yeah. Hey, yeah. So long. Yeah, maybe after that, he'll share the sheepfold with the people. Hey, the people man. let the people know. The people should know because we we. <laughs> I know my shoulders broad, but goodness gracious. <laughs> She's steady heaving it on there. Not the people should know. Not the people should know. I believe that the I'll be I give everybody their puzzle piece, right? Yeah. And I, you know, I'll be I, I agree. you know, you gotta share your puzzle piece. What's the purpose he gave it to you if you don't share it? He he actually gave that to you. But you my head, yeah, so you. you gotta present it. We flesh it out together, but that was that was a, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a that was a good one. Yeah, we we will definitely share that as long as long as is y'all's will, y'all will. We will definitely share that. Um, anybody else? Natasha, 
Are you satisfied, Coty? Are you satisfied? Look what you did. <laughs> no, I'm done. I, I I said that was for Tabernacle. I only one that I it wasn't supposed more. to go there. Yeah, we it can, was we can. for Tabernacle, but I just I had to think another way to rework my questions. <laughs> you did that. You did that. You did that. Uh, no, we can we can go into to it more doing boots because I mean we just kind of glossed over and referenced scriptures, but we can we can read them in more detail doing boots. We don't, we'll have time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's all good. I can just crack the book. Absolutely. And um, could you drop the link for me that we be using um, during the pre-study for like those sacred texts and stuff? Could you put that for me right quick? I say yes, I'm too blessed to be stressed, nevertheless, I must confess, yes, this is Project Wake Up Jacob, on the Sabbath we rest, and reflect upon his goodness, because we are guided by the Ruach Coco Dash, yes, whenever I get dressed, yes, I'm dripping cold as fresh, yes, this style fit me down to a T, because I'm a ruffian, discussing precepts from the holy manual of his constructions in TZ's cover four corners of my garment Greet me with shalom before you step into my carpet Yah is not the author of confusion I beg your pardon But you who was out by oath can stop it before it's even thought about Thank you. Be blessed, blessed by the best I'm cold as fresh